Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bargain Bin, a show about speedrunning video games all under $20. My name is Midnight Vesper, and I'm going to be your host for this show. If you're new to The Bargain Bin, here's how this kind of works. For more current slash digital games, we're going to be using stores like Steam, GOG, itch.io, Ubisoft, Epic, and we're going to look at their list price or MSRP price. For retro games, like you're going to see today, we're going to be using the website pricecharting.com. We're going to be looking at the loose price of each individual game. We do not count sales or discounts as they vary from time of purchase. A couple of announcements real fast. Information on all of our all of our hotfix shows are available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs in any of our weekly shows. If you're watching this on YouTube in the future and would love to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gdq. And of course, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. On today's show, since we had our lovely Nintendo Direct, it's going to be all about the Super Nintendo today. We're going to have the original Star Fox by Snake Madness, which has a loose price of around $14. And then right after that is going to be Final Fantasy Mystic Quest which is just a dollar more for around $15. It's going to be a retro powerhouse today, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Snake, how are you doing on this wonderful day? I've been spinning my wheels for about mm, two and a half, almost three hours, so I'm doing pretty good. I'm hyped up. <laughs> Pacing back and forth, getting ready for it. I got BK for co-commentary. Uh, great runner when he did run this game and great Super Mario World uh, player, so. Hey there, BK. Howdy, everyone. Uh, yeah, I haven't touched this game in years. Uh, I play Super Mario World mods now, but uh, I'm still very fond of it and it's fun to talk about, so here we are. Thanks for having me. So, so I suppose we may as well Get ready, and uh, time starts when you finally gain control of your R-Wing. So there's going to be a moment here before uh, time actually starts. Good luck. And uh, I'm sorry very much about the black boars that you're going to be seeing around the game. This game is really weird due to the FX chip and the limitations. Uh, for performance issues, they had to basically scrunch the aspect ratio just a bit, but then it's going to widen out on the world map, so... Uh, not too much that can be done about that, but time's about to come up here in 3, 2, 1, start. So, you might be wondering, how do you go off and speedrun an on-rail shooter of all things. And to be fair, that's a fair question. Uh, BK, if you want to go ahead and uh, explain a little bit of that while uh, I focus on my shots here. Sure, so in this game, there's basically three categories of time save. Um, the first one, which is the most evident off the get-go is um, this has a boost button, which makes you go a bit faster through the the auto scroller. Um, and by and large, Jake is going to hold that down the entire run, with some exceptions I'll go into later. Um, so that's one time save, just literally boosting to get through the levels a bit faster. Uh, the second one is this game lags quite a bit. You'll notice that um, unlike most SNES games, which run at like 60 frames per second, this one hums along at about 15 and then slows down when it's pretty busy on screen. Um, so lag reduction is another very big part of the run. And in order to reduce lag, you'll see Jake um, like fly off to the to the far edge of the screen every now and then. Uh, and right now he's deployed a bomb to get um, all these enemies off screen as quickly as possible. And that's another piece of time save. Um, and so lag reduction is going to be a recurring theme. Um, and then the last piece of time save is fast boss kills. Um, so this game has fairly elaborate bosses, um, and there are some pretty elaborate and tricky strats to kill them quickly. 
um, and then off-screen them after they die, so the uh, the explosion is processed off-screen, which saves a bunch of time. And speaking of bosses, we're about to come up on the first boss of the run, the Attack Cruiser. And uh, recently, we ended up finding out more about this boss. So throughout, uh, near the start here, I'm going to be boosting up on him. Uh, and in doing this, if I position myself close enough with these boosts and get the kill on this uh, right node, he won't spawn the ships like he normally does because boosting up there ends up delaying his ability to go off and spawn them. Uh, what's about to happen here, hopefully, if I get it, is an animation skip, which uh, normally when you kill him, he flies up into the air, goes spinning around. It costs you some time, but uh, Fling, one of the older runners for the game, ended up accidentally coming across that if you hit him after uh, he dies, he just drops straight to the ground, so you can just avoid that altogether. Very nice. And that was about a three minute, two second flat corn area, so definitely one of the better ones that I've had. Uh, the best corn area that I have had is about three minute, one set, 1.7 seconds. Uh, you'll see in the past that people used to go into third-person view for Asteroid. Uh, third-person view can be a lot more smooth with controlling, but the problem is with it, you're not able to shove as many enemies off the screen and get some of the uh, clean shots that you really want to for the level. Uh, so it ends up just being better to stay here. You can get more off your screen. It ends up being quite nice. Uh, that was that was a really nice uh, snake kill there. I know when I run this game, that thing causes so much lag. Uh, if you go off and shoot it in the head, it ends up just completely uh, destroying itself altogether. Uh, otherwise, it's going to split into multiple pieces like that. And what I'm going to try and go for here is get some shots on these guys so that they don't fire off extra projectiles. And when it comes to lag reduction, one big item is saving your wingman. And this is probably one of the funnier ones where you go off to the side and the enemy is just no longer there. Ooh. And uh, another advantage of first person mode is that um, the game doesn't have to render all the polygons in the R wing, instead it just has to render this these few sprites of this green reticle here, so it, it goes a bit faster. So what you saw happen there is uh, Jake is launching bombs as soon as the first phase of this boss opens up because they're little laser shooters that you barely saw to the left of the screen. Um, and normally you're expected to just engage with them uh, with your lasers, but if you if you shoot a bomb and time it very well, you can just destroy half of them in each cycle, and that's pretty much the optimal strategy for this boss. And then when uh, that first part falls away, you just unload on the rest of it with uh, lasers and bombs to kill it off really quickly. And as you go off and finish off the boss, uh, it's best to go off and get a camera change right as the boss is dying, but if you don't go for the camera change before that, you're just going to be locked into it. That costs you about one and a half seconds, roughly. And let's see, going into Space Armada. So the double lasers that we have right now, the basic lasers and double lasers are polygons, so they're really laggy compared to the Type B blasters that we are just about to get right now. 
Uh, these are instead sprites. So when you're shooting them, uh, they're a lot less laggy in comparison. Plus, they have a larger hitbox. And it's very I'm convenient that the most. Uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go for a bomb right there. It deals with roughly about five enemies. Three of them like to fly around and be immune, so uh, we go off, get those off screen. That's a recent addition to the run. And, uh, it's very fortunate that the most powerful weapon in the game also happens to be the most optimal for the game to actually draw. Yeah. It's very fortunate. Extremely fortunate there. Uh, in fact, the double laser is by far the worst thing that you could go off and run with. Uh, so essentially you want to get to that type B blaster as soon as possible or just keep to the single blaster. Uh, we're coming up on yet another crash kill right there. A little bit trickier to go for uh, considering it's right out and you really want to get rid of this guy because he just stays around way too long. So for safety purposes I'm going to try to hold on to this uh, overshield that we ended up getting in that last node, but we're going to have to sort of thread the needle between a floating bar. Uh, we don't want to stop our boosting whatsoever. We want to keep it going at all times, but in doing so, uh, trying to get past this bar that's going up and down is a little bit trickier. But usually you won't go off and need it. It's more of a small safety item, so I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, we're just going to have to be close to, if not full health, for this boss as we implement a strategy that's great for consistency, but is a bit riskier. start rolling up on the atomic base. Uh, coming up here, you'll see that checkpoint there. We're just going to ignore it, just boost past it. And on the second boost here, we're just going to level out, and that leads into the shot for that guy. I just want to point out I love the music here. Oh, the music's amazing, especially the uh, Corneria theme. Uh, I've had so many runs go off and reset, and the fact that you get to listen to Corneria first is definitely uh, helpful in terms of just getting through that first stage. I think Venom Highway is my favorite song off this uh, off this game, but we're not going there today. That's level two. I would also say uh, Fortuna, over on level 3, has quite amazing music. Terrible yeah, enemies. Like, amazing like music. Jazzy pop. And, uh, I'm actually going to hold on to my boost just to boost through that uh, part right there because it's at a set speed, so we want to push ourselves as close forward as possible. Oh... So, right here, you're supposed to be accurate with your shots for the optimal way of doing this. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go ahead and run into it and call it a day. Nice. Yeah, the, uh... This cutscene is a little bit long, so I'd like to take this moment to remind everyone to drink plenty of water and, uh, yeah... If you don't have some, go get some. If not, well, hopefully your pipes aren't frozen up right now. Yeah, the um, the hitboxes for those three appendages that he crashed into are extremely finicky, and I used to lose a bunch of time on that when I ran this game, so just crashing into them and instantly killing them in the process is uh, definitely the move in terms of time save. 
there was a question that just popped up in chat and it said uh it's from uh, iggy zig how much of a factor is lag mitigation in this run given everything that's going on on screen given everything that's going on uh if i was to go off and mess around on corneria you're talking about 15 to 16 seconds easily uh if you don't know anything about the lab mitigation uh just that alone uh boosting would be another roughly 15 seconds if you didn't boost at all so it's as important as constantly boosting I always um, enjoy so, that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I always enjoy the enemy that, uh, with with the legs that ends up uh being hurt because of the spawning of what's around him. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, on the topic of lag reduction, uh, you'll see Jake not firing the laser that much more than he has to to clear out the enemies that he decided he's gonna kill. Um, because polygons and sprites on screen lag the game, so fewer sprites in this case with this laser power means the game runs along a bit faster um sometimes you'll fire a few extra ones to make extra sure that the enemy is going to die like in case he misses a shot but uh, you'll notice that he he's not like spamming them all the time and that's deliberate that's a deliberate time save measure i will say we've taken a couple extra hits on my left wing than i would prefer to be at uh a little bit rough, which means I won't be going for the time save on crashing into this wingman right here. But, uh, it's not too bad. We're able to just stay low and sort of take care of that appropriately. And dancing in sector time. Probably one of, if not the worst boss, in my opinion, outside of the, uh, Fantron and Andros fight. I'd, I'd agree with that. So, this boy is uh, a little bit rough in terms of trying to do fast. Uh, we're actually going to put ourselves in a position so that our the main body of our ship crashes into those as he gets closer. So. That was an alright fight. Nice. I would think this is the the highest probability opportunity to lose a wing in this run, no? Uh oh. Assuming you catch him off center and he clips your wings. Yeah, he he could absolutely go off and knock your wings out like that pretty easily. Uh, if he decides to go to one extreme or another, uh, he can go low uh, for as he's passing, or he can be higher up. But you can usually determine that based on uh, the first time he passes around. Uh, for those watching, losing a wing in this game um, is bad for two reasons. One, it uh, brings you back to the initial single laser power-up, which is not only measly, so you have to work a lot harder to kill enemies and bosses, but it also lags more than this uh, laser power-up. So the run becomes a lot worse if you take wing damage. And based on the pathing, we won't be coming across a wing until just before the final boss fight. Uh, because of just flight path in general, uh, it would be too time costly to even attempt to go for the others. Oh, 
so one of the harder tricks will eventually be coming up here. Uh, the Fantron skip. Uh, it's really awkward to go for. Uh, you'll find it in most of the top runs on the leaderboard. But it requires that you go off and end up using a bomb to uh, bypass some damage. Therefore making it so you can skip out on the second phase of this fight as you lay in some more shots. Kind of like that. Nice. Uh, someone in the chat nice. asked nice. if uh, if the Fantron has an unavoidable attack. Uh, so if you launch a Nova Bomb at him when he's in a particular phase of the fight, uh, he will launch a heat-seeking missile at you that I've seen avoided, but it's pretty hard to avoid. And you it is a really just just hit still, you. And it's avoid you. It's really scary, but you just have to sit still in that moment. That's not a strat I knew about. I guess Nintendo was counting on the player panicking and trying to like swerve around it, which is really hard. And going for another lovely crash kill here. So, uh... Some of the few times which you don't boost in this game are so you line yourself up with crashing into an enemy because that is a faster way of killing it, which is time save. Normally I would go for a crash kill coming up here, but we are just going to avoid that one because I took two unnecessary hits. And now we're coming up on the french fries. These things just love to chug that frame rate. So the best way that we can really deal with them is just moving side to side, trying to keep as many off our screen as possible. We go far left, we go to the right. And then coming up here is Fantron, yet again. So for this, he splits into three. It's random as to which one he'll be. We got the lucky middle. Nice. So... Ooh, this pace is looking really good right now. And uh, as for here... Uh, Bombs, shooting, spinning, uh, and just keep that going. And, uh, in this case, I'm going to hope that uh, he doesn't hit a wing and potentially knock it out, but we should be fine. Oh, which brings us to the final stretch towards Andros, which uh, a one cycle is required to get a new record most of the time at this point. Uh, and doing so is approximately 10 shots for each eye in a relatively short amount of time. So, uh, I've been working on trying to figure out a setup to make this fight more consistent, but it's still very, very tight uh, in terms of being able to do so. But you are able to delay 
uh, his projectiles, if you set things up right, this is not going to be a one cycle, sadly. Uh, as the tiles were just in the way enough to block a ton of our shots. Just pretty big. Hmm. It's kind of mean how uh, a trick with time saver time loss this big is at the very end of this run. GG, nice run. And time. A little bit of a shame about the Andros fight, but overall, still a solid run. Yeah. Very, very, very nice run overall. Let's see. What was the exact final time there? Looks like a uh, 2238. All right. Ooh. Nice job, all run. Uh, anything, any quick announcements? Like, if, if someone uh, were to maybe they watch this and they're like, man, this Starfox run looks rad. I want to learn it. You know, where, where can they go? Uh, you can go ahead, check me out uh, on Twitch at snake underscore madness. I run this game regularly. Uh, I will be working on some uh, boss video guys guides and some uh, lag reduction videos uh, just to sort of explain that, but I'll freely go off and explain any questions that anyone might have about this game. And also you can find the Star Fox Discord. Uh, you can find it on the leaderboard. It's really easy. Uh, it's promoted all over the place with any of the Star Fox games. So Star Fox 64, Assault, Adventure, Zero, Command, any of it. If you're interested in any of those, you can find that there. And uh, BK, I know that you wear commentary. If anyone wants to maybe see what all you do outside of uh, Star Fox. Uh, my Twitch account is the same as my as my account. I'm a commentary there. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't touched Star Fox in years, because as it turns out, I don't like grinding for world record. Uh, but if you're into uh, Super Mario World mods, that's what I do these days. Uh, I'm a moderator, in fact, for SMW Central. Oh, nice. Uh, any final words, any final shout outs, anything else along those lines? Honestly, just a big thank you to Vesper for having me on here and everyone else with GDQ and also massive thank you to BK for joining me for commentary uh trying to get someone on was a little bit tricky as schedules got muddled given everything going on as of late so it's appreciated thanks for having me it's a fun game to chat about have a good night everyone yep, yep. just real quick uh just so you know your subs gifts gift subs Amazon Prime subs and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support our weekly hot fix content. So thank you so much for supporting our shows. And if you missed any of the runs from Awesome Games Tone Quick 2021 online, or if you want to watch any of the previous hot fix shows, you can go to youtube.com slash games done quick and check out our archive. Uh, our, I'm sorry, check out the, the archive of our live shows. And of course, the, all these hot fix shows are brought to you by you for you like you. If you have like to have ad-free viewing, please consider using your Prime Gaming account to support the weekly GDQ Hot Fix content. We're going to take a small little break here to play some ads and get all that taken care of. So it's a great time for you to hydrate, stretch, walk around, and get all that taken care of because coming up next is Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. This is going to be a fun race. We have two, two lucky runners for this one. 
So stay tuned. We will be right back. All right. Welcome back to the bargain bin. All so I'm sorry, showcasing all the video games under $20. I'm your host, Midnight Vesper. And just one real quick thing. If you've missed any of the runs from Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online or want to watch any of the previous hot big shows, you can go to youtube.com slash games done quick and check out our archive of the live shows. And speaking of live shows, continuing on our Nintendo trend for this bargain bin. We're going to have our nice race between Just 10 and PK4787 with Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. How are you all doing on this amazing day? Just fantastic. Oh, yeah. Very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I guess uh, without any further ado, we're going to kick this off. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Do it. All right. Um, on go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So already we've cheated. Uh, so what these guys have done already is they've done a run in the past of the game all the way, probably 85, 90% of the way through uh, and picked up the last character. And what that does is when you save that file and then start another new file, you get a resistance glitch. And that means that all of your secondary characters have uh resistances and stats equal to that very end game person so all of your secondary characters are going to be doing more damage they're more resistant to more things and it's just it makes things way easier you're going to see a ton of damage hopefully if tristam doesn't miss at the start with yes, everything <laughs> we rely on them a lot uh, except for in this fight which we're on our own and hopefully we will not be showcasing how poorly this can go Yep, this is Behemoth. Um, Behemoth can kill you, and there's nothing you can do about it. If he crits, you die. If you miss twice, you die. That's uh, Let's see. PK's through. I saw him miss on, on Ten's side. All right, he's through as well. Nice job. You, you beat the, the first final boss of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we could point out the number of places you could reset if you're really going for a PB in this run, but it's 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 for the first 15 minutes, it's almost every single encounter. Could potentially be a reset yeah this game is is so like it's very simple there's um most final fantasies have more like let's say swords like i know final fantasy 4 for example has more swords than this game has weapons entirely and so it's, it, there's not a whole lot to it uh which makes doing a perfect run very uh very reasonable like there's it's, it's very possible to have a, a run with very few or no mistakes And just real quick, uh, just a quick uh, introduction from all of you, just in case someone may be coming in late. Sure. Uh, well, I'm PK4787. I've been running this for a few months, not including the time spent uh, as a child renting this from Blockbuster, banging my head against it repeatedly, and then having to return it without ever finishing it, which is probably what got me into it to begin with. Um, I also stream Final Fantasy IV, uh, in free enterprise, uh, but that is that's me in a nutshell. Stomps people in Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Free Enterprise. He's real good. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Ten, just Ten. Uh, been running this game for about a year now, and I'm just a glutton for punishment, apparently. Yep, everyone who plays this game is. And I'm calm. I'll be doing calm and Terry. Yeah, this is fun already. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo! Oh, no. Yeah. There's a miss. Here come the misses. So I think at the, at the start here, you have like a each character has a 75% chance to miss uh, with their regular attacks. And it's just super punishing when it happens. So that's that's why there's like this whole beginning. There's another one, I guess. <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> 75%, by the way. Um, yeah, basically one miss if you're really looking for a PB attempt. Um, just because... Uh, ben, ben, so Ben's the character that they've named, by the way. That that is Ben. Uh, ben can take damage from, or Ben takes a ton of damage from everything here at the start. Uh, so like one miss can mean an extra attack on him, which means he dies, which means everything's slower, which means reset. Uh, let's see. So Ten's coming up to the first boss fight here. Uh, so he, Kaylee has the life spell, which is supposed to instant kill undead. 
I, I believe I believe the way it works, it's supposed to kill undead creatures, but the flag is flipped in the game, and so it kills basically everything that isn't undead. <laughs> and the Minotaur is not undead, so we can just cast life on it and one-shot it. Well, on the bright side, they didn't miss the life spell. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, white magic can miss. Everything can miss for the most part. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I f I'm pretty sure that uh, white spells, um, like the life spells or the cure spells, when they use that offensively, have the same chance to miss mm -hmm. as um, their physical attacks do. I think that has the same uh, accuracy counter or percentage, whatever. Uh, but there are other spells. There's So there's three uh, spell classes in the game. There's white spells, the cure, is the, uh, the lifes and whatnot. There are... Uh, black spells, which are like Arrow of Fire, I think are the only two we pick up, if I remember right. And then there are Wizard spells, which are Flare and Meteor. Those are much stronger. They'll show up at the end of the game. The Black spells and the Wizard spells can't miss, so that's nice. Only time we're sad is when those get reflected in our face, which doesn't happen a whole lot, fortunately. So, Close race so far. It's, it's a good time. For now. <laughs> Ten is uh, about to buy bombs off of Tristam. And that's another weapon that they can select from uh, to use. Yeah, bombs do uh, damage to all enemies, and they cannot miss. So they are uh, in a huge boon. Yep. They do a ton of damage too. We we so basically this uh, this run is sort of broken down into two um, two chunks. Uh, before you get good spells, and after you get good spells. And before you get the good spells, uh, we take huge advantage of the bombs. Um, the worm fight that PK just did is one of the few times, so you'll actually see something that isn't bombs. He just used the axe because the worms are, are weak to it, and now we're going to switch to bombs for, I believe, the rest of this dungeon. Yep. Uh, in, until the, the boss. And uh, maybe you want to explain sort of the <clears throat> the screen transition inputting and like the post-fight inputting, if they'll hear the little click sounds as we switch rooms and after fights. Okay, uh, so at the end, there, there's a couple things. So at the end of fights, there's a little, there's a couple frames like where the screen is loading or something, and you can hit the L, L and R button to switch between uh, weapons. So if, if you like look next to their health bar, you see the bombs. If they want to switch to whatever, they hit L or R, it switches to sword or axe or, you know, claw later on. Um, and there's a little window after the fight uh, where you can push L or R and switch. Uh, and it's it's efficient because that window of time is going to happen anyways because the game is loading. So if you can fit your inputs during that window in that window, then you're going to save time. Because otherwise, you have to actually fully stop your character before L and R will work. You can't just hit L and R on the move um, and switch weapons, which would be amazing, but you can't do that. So you wanna, they're going to try and fit as many of those L and R inputs um, outside of fights uh, during the little loading transition as they can to save as many frames as possible yes and whenever you change screens unlike most final fantasy games you can't actually just hold a directional input um so you can also use the lr or the uh the switch from auto to manual to buffer uh that that little dialogue box that pops up giving you the the, the area um but on top of lr there's also the manual and auto which is very entertaining as well if you want to maybe give a quick idea of you know what each one does and is that faster to go uh uh what is it shurikens and the axe on the single instead of uh it whatever? is a real miss or crit i huh. like 30 frames or something so i, okay. I like to i like to risk it and then do nice. that <laughs> <laughs> realistically you'd think that would work <laughs> All right, so um, ten is coming up on our first real boss fight, which is uh, which is Flamerous Rex. Uh, this is an undead, and uh, brings us to one of the uh, the differences between this is the U.S. run, uh, U.S. version, and uh, the Japanese version, I believe, is the other one, and it has the uh, the undead flag flipped correctly, so that uh, in the Japanese version you can do things like uh, like life this boss and kill uh, kill him instantly. But there are other places in the game where you can't, and we'll see that later on. Uh, which makes the U.S. version faster and a little bit friendlier. Uh, so something they're trying to do is uh, they can use Cure offensively to do damage. You'll see that uh, that they're doing does a pretty good chunk of damage. Uh, they get six of those before they have to switch to bombs. Ideally, what we want to see is Tristam throwing his ninja stars, getting crit, 
uh, uh, getting crits because that's just massive, massive damage, and it's it's a way to chunk through the boss very, very quickly. Uh, but uh, also, he oh, oh my god, two crits. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> that's the other thing though is that, uh, yeah, that ben, ben just kind of falls over. I think every attack, or it, it doesn't matter what it is, two attacks from uh, Flamerous on Tristan or not, not on Tristan, sorry, on Ben will just kill him outright. And so Tristam has to use the life spell a lot. So we're really hoping to see Tristam take all the attacks uh, so that he can just keep chunking cures and chunking ninja stars and, and get through this this fight as quickly as possible. This is really... That's a third crit. Dude, what are you doing over there? This is his first run on actual SNES. Oh, I missed my I don't final think cure. Oh, no. Well, you got health. You're doing okay, I think. PK should be okay. I'm taking it safe. Taking it safe. Yep. <laughs> yep. Knew it. Probably a good call. <laughs> going oh, for really? it. Oh, going for it. Well, oh, going oh. for it. Oh, what the, oh crit? the crit. Nice. Oh, I almost right, really tried to split. <laughs> <laughs> Is it safe to say that in this game that uh, RNG plays a factor? <laughs> uh, RNG is a majority of the game, as you can see, maybe between the two fights. Um, someone like Flamerous has a couple attacks that are considered, you know, entirely empty attacks. Where, you know, he maybe poisons Tristam or he tries to cast Sleep on Tristam. That does no damage. Or you can have multiple of those AoE attacks over and over and over again. So each Flamerous fight is uh, terrible in its own way. Nice sand tech, by the way. Ten. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, so when uh, when Ten said, what was it, glutton for punishment earlier? Basically, the amount of RNG in this game, like, just there's nothing you can do, and you'll just randomly either gain or lose, like, 30 minutes based on what the game decides to give you. Whether Flamerous decides he's just going to one-shot you, or not, well, yeah, one-shot you or something crazy, or, um, I mean, m most of the time loss or time save comes later on we'll definitely get to that uh, but yeah this game is just massively rng heavy yeah so your your typical run is just a ridiculous amount of rng to get to the point where you have uh an, an absolutely gating rng uh an hour and a half into the run yeah this is basically two races in one there's the race to floor six and then there's the race from floor six to the end and getting to floor six first is the moral victory because from that point you can lose 12 minutes depending on um some rng that's coming up and then you just i mean you're just automatically behind 12 minutes depending on what happens uh so they both picked up the uh the steel shield it adds a little bit of defense and the bigger thing is it makes them faster um because a lot of the uh the fights coming up in the next place the wintry cave are really just gross and have a lot of status effects and such and so trying to go faster um trying to outspeed them and get lucky with that is is a pretty big deal um, yeah, i think we were discussing who's going to be the one to get double confused in the next couple dungeons oh it'll be both of you <laughs> <laughs> a question did pop up in chat uh that could be interesting what's the main plot of this game uh, Ben's trying to get a date with a girl, but they keep leaving him whenever he completes a dungeon. I think that's what it is, right? And he finally ends up uh, winning over the girl by saving the founding father off of his ship. Spoilers. <laughs> that all sounds extremely accurate. <laughs> um, and you'll see at the very end. Uh, so obscure. <laughs> he, he, ends up, he ends up with probably who he wanted to end up with the whole time. You know, that's actually a good question. I really don't know what the plot of this game is other than, like, there's a final boss that needs to die to save the world, so we go do it. <laughs> yeah, there... Ben has a very, very uh, poorly explained backstory. In that very first cutscene, he basically says, what happened? My entire village just got destroyed. And then the floaty guy's like, that's fine. Come with me. Let's go do some stuff. And then that's about it. I think he says something about the Dark King taking over, maybe. Oh, yeah. Something? <laughs> oh, yeah, so it is just there's a final boss and you gotta kill him. Easy plot. Simple yeah. plot. I'm not gonna lie, I'm yeah. not sure I've ever read a text box in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think the last time I had a text box read was when I first played this game back in, like, 92. 
<laughs> and the only reason why I know because I still have the original cart and I, I loaded it up a couple years ago and one of the saves was called AOL 4.0. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm trying I, to be, I'm, I'll go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm trying to think of a text box that I remember seeing in this game other than so-and-so has joined your party. <laughs> nah. I'm sure I'm sure there are others, but I can't tell you what they say. Alright, so we picked up Phoebe. Uh, Phoebe is our offensive lineman. She's not very fast, but she hits really hard. Uh, she has thunder spells at her disposal, and that thunder spell does a ton of damage. You can see on 10 screen, he just um, exploded those worms, and we're going to do that a couple times throughout this um, uh, throughout this dungeon in particular, because there's a lot of stuff that's weak to thunder. Has anybody duped yet, by the way? No, I have not. No? Um, and maybe you want to explain what like the auto and the manual settings are for anybody who <clears throat> sure. is, is not noticing those, because that's big in this dungeon. It's true. So if you look at Phoebe, uh, to the right of her name, you'll see the word manual or auto, depending on which screen you're looking at. Um, if they're on auto, then you have, as the player, have the option of controlling what they do with their turn, um, which gives you control, but obviously is slower because you have more inputs. Um, and if they're on auto, then they are going to determine what their best course of action is. Uh, one thing during this speed run is we understand what they're going to do or what they're supposed to do, at least on auto for every single fight, and we take advantage of that. So like any time in this, uh, there's three of those uh, hedgehogs, or if there's three of the scorpions, or two of each of those, um, then we know we could just leave Phoebe on auto. She's going to cast fire, and... Uh, and she's gonna one shot them and we can just leave it at that. And anytime there's two turtles like 10 just had, uh, just leave her on auto, she's gonna auto thunder and she's gonna kill them all. Uh, but then there's other fights where like, say there were two hedgehogs and one um, one scorpion, for example, then you have to take her off of auto, you have to manually cast fire. Otherwise I think she single cast fire on something and then you just don't get the one turn one shot that you are trying to get out of all these fights. Um, so knowing what happens when uh, when they're on auto is a, a huge thing about running, uh, speed running this game. Uh, let's see, so Ten just got yeah. through the um, the first set of centaurs, and those centaurs can do confusion. They will always do confusion on Phoebe first, but if they do it, uh, if the second one decides to do confuse as well, then it can either confuse Phoebe or Ben. It just kind of picks randomly, and if it picks Ben and you get confused, then all kinds of stuff can happen. It's just a bad time. I'm duping on the centaurs. Oh, not more. If you want to, when that catches there. Okay. See, oh, I have. Oh. Okay, I so. Enjoy the... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. You're good. I was going to say, I enjoy the, the enemy animations, how they change as they get weaker. Oh, yeah. Um, that's that's a good point. The uh, the enemies have uh, like as you do damage to them, they have different uh, yeah different animations. So you can see, I think they have two a piece, and then the bosses have, I want to say four a piece, if I remember right. So you can use that to kind of gauge where they are um, with health. Um, PK, did you say you you duped? Yeah, on my on the two centaur spots, I'm I'm gonna be duping until either I dupe as many as I need or I get the two centaurs and the worm. So duping is super simple. Uh, basically what you do is you have to put P uh, Phoebe on manual. You go into the item uh, tab and you use whatever you want to dupe. And then when it gets to Phoebe's turn, you just back out and run away. The game thinks that you used one, so it puts one more of whatever you used in your inventory, but obviously you didn't actually use it because you didn't go through with it. So if you use a seed with, um, with Ben's turn and then back out and run away, it will add one more seed to your inventory and you'll have one more than you started with. Um, so what seeds do is they replenish your spell casting uh, for whoever you use it on. So it will uh, fill up Phoebe's um, spell casts um, or Ben's depending on who you use. And uh, I mentioned the three schools um, of magic earlier. You have a set number of times that you can cast each spell um, and you replenish that. So like right now, Phoebe has thunder. She has five thunders at her disposal. And then when she gets down to zero, we use a seed on her to um, to bring that back to five. And so we're going to dupe, I think three, I think they both dupe three seeds if I'm, or normally um, dupe three well, seeds. Uh, I did just finish duping my third. Okay. 
and that will be enough to get them um, to where they're gonna have infinite seeds later on. We'll talk about that when we get there too. Let's see, so 10 is getting to the squid. The squid is um, super easy. Basically, you just um, kill off the two birds on the side, and then you shoot him in the face repeatedly. Okay, you thunder him once, and then you shoot in the face repeatedly. Um, if if uh, if Ben dies here, it's really not a big deal. He's kind of disposable in this fight because Phoebe does massive damage. Just like the uh, the Flamers fight, we're really hoping for the secondary character to do a ton of damage. See you, Ben. There's a crit, 686. That's huge. That's that's a big hit. And goes back to the the resistance glitch from earlier. Um, Phoebe's doing a ton more damage than she would otherwise, and it's actually like it, I, I've. <laughs> 95% of my runs in this game, you know, have been with uh, with the resistance glitch and then like let's say, you know, if I start a, a new File or something and don't have that and have to go through it for the first time. It's actually really challenging <clears throat> It's a lot more challenging to go through the game without the resistance glitch. It's amazing how big of a difference that makes um, And all you have to do again is you just go until you get Phoebe you pick her up for the second time save a file and then you just start a different file and You automatically have that so you may you may have used that in the past before and not even realized it Phoebe, why miss? Please, no. Yep, so we got uh, PK shooting in the face, chunking bombs. All right, so what Ten's doing here is he's picking up the heal potions out of this chest and then using the cure potions. What he's doing is he's setting up the top row of his inventory with the seeds, the what was cure potions, the heal potions, and... Uh, later on, it'll be uh, what's called refreshers, and then we're gonna do some inventory management, quote unquote, and it's gonna put a lot of stuff in our inventory later on. That's gonna help break the game a little bit, a lot of bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's one major oversight from the developers in the purchasing of items in this game that we are going to take very aggressive advantage of. Oh yes. Let's see. So, what haven't I talked about? The uh, they got the claw uh, probably five, uh, it was probably like five six minutes ago uh, when Ben fell down off the cliff. Uh, Phoebe was like, "Here, this claw saved my life," but I guess I don't want it to save my life anymore. So here, you have it instead. Um, and what that does is it allows them to climb up the walls with the um, with the I don't know climbing graphics on the walls. You can see what they are. <laughs> <laughs> She also very conveniently waits for Ben to fall all the way down to the ground, and then she climbs down very elegantly, and then is like, oh, here you go, take this. So, let's see, so Ten just, so uh, he talked to the old man, got what's called the wake water from the old man, which is a little bit of water from this area which has not been frozen, and they realize that, um, that if they use that water on something, then it will melt the magical ice. And so we're like, well, if we go kill the boss up in the ice pyramid, then we can unlock all the magical water to uh, melt all the magical ice. So we're going to go melt all the magical ice. And we're going to start in... This is Falls... Oh, God. What's the name of the place? Falls Basin? I don't know names. That's a text box. That just... No, I, no text boxes. No, um, yeah. Something like <laughs> that. Very creative names in this game, as you'll see moving forward. <laughs> Oh yeah, the uh, the first place was uh, was in a forest, and it was a town in the forest. So they called it uh, Foresta. Uh, this this place that we're around now is uh, full of water, so it's aqu Aquaria. Uh, and then later on, we're gonna get somewhere that's windy, so they called it uh, Windia. Yeah, really, <laughs> top notch. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time. They had a meeting. They went with the first pitch for each one. <laughs> What's interesting always about the town music too is that they all have the same theme, but it's all done in different ways for different towns. Yeah, and they seem to have the same residents in every town as well. Mm -hmm. I guess there is Firebird, but we spend about five seconds in Firebird, so it doesn't really count. It's another creative I'm, thing. I'm, at least it's not Fyra. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, we have to do something different. Let's see. Yeah, so, someone, in, oh, someone in chat just really went off and said, really cannot overstate how amazing music is. And as a runner of this and stuff like that, there's nothing that beats the final dungeon theme, in my opinion. That's my favorite theme in this. One of the one of the reasons that I put myself through the, the pain of running this game over and over is just how good the soundtrack is. Like, I, I do a lot of music-related stuff. Um, and so 
you know, I'm very, very in it with, uh, like, I, I'm very particular about my favorite Final Fantasy soundtracks, and this is number three for me out of all of the Final Fantasies. It's so good. There's one song that's, that's like, questionable, and the rest of them are just so, <laughs> so good. Considering how it was put on the box art, this was RPG for, like, beginners, it's surprising to me on how well the, uh, soundtrack is for this game yeah the, per the person who wrote the music was was not writing for a child's game that's absolutely for sure the soundtrack is so good uh, uh. all right so we're at we're at the uh the snow crab fight on 10 screen um snow crab doesn't really confuse a lot but you wouldn't know it watching this fight <laughs> 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 oh i need some confuse i need to catch up it sounds like go crab <laughs> Crab's trying to bring the uh, the race a little bit closer. Yeah. Um, so I'll come back to that in a second. If you look at PK's screen, he set these ice blocks so that you can jump. If you look in the upper right of the screen, or I guess the lower right of the screen, you see a little guy hanging out over there. We're just skipping him entirely because another oversight. They didn't really say how to, uh, or they didn't build this place so that you could just skip half of it. And so we just skip half of it. And Ten's already through the fight. PK's into the fight. Um... Let's see. So yeah, uh, Snow Crab does a ton of damage. This is this is a really really tough fight. Um, we're really hoping for basically Phoebe to go nuts with thunders, and we just want Ben to get two axe hits off before he dies, and that's unfortunate. Um, so PK, you're gonna be hearing that a lot, I'd assume. Right here, yes. <laughs> My fight was so lucky. Just did full send and just happened to kill it. Yeah, that's. I have <laughs> I have an interesting question for you all in chat, just to see, just to see how well, or just to see what you guys' thoughts are. Uh, Sensei, someone in chat basically said, uh, "How long do you think you would take to play this game on for a first time, first playthrough? Don't know anything about the game." Uh, you talking like as a speedrunner or as a casual play? Casual, casually. That's a great question. That's I would leave that to PK. Uh, as a child, renting it from Blockbuster, I don't think I ever beat it unless I took someone else's save file. So I, I don't know how good of an answer I have. I, I, I think, you know, if you're accustomed to RPGs, it has very linear... Oh, I'm dead. Oh, no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that, was, that was a tough time to take that question right there. Um... You know, it's it's a couple hours. Though. There's a hundred percent run, and I, I know this doesn't probably give a great estimate of time, but that is only about, you know, potentially forty-five minutes to an hour longer than this run. So, it for just a blind playthrough, I would, you know, maybe a couple hours, but it's very, very linear. It it is very. I would I would estimate somewhere between like if you've never played the game before and you're taking your time and going through it and enjoying it, uh, probably ten to twelve. Okay. I would say. For, for an RPG, it's very, very quick. Um, and part of the part of the thing about the the speed runs is that we skip an entire like we skip twenty five percent of the game. Um, and so adding that on, plus you know, just going through and, and figuring out how stuff works, probably ten to twelve hours, I would say for a for a start to finish first time playthrough of this. That's no crap. The only reason I don't so have a <laughs> that was pretty clutch. <laughs> The only reason I don't have a real answer is because I've actually never played this casually. If I actually don't have a clue. Wait, you never played this? Your very first run was a was a speed run? That is correct. I didn't know. Monster. Um, yeah. It, That's why I literally haven't watching read it my, the Xbox. For those watching my Snow Crab run there, uh, you will notice that the bosses on essentially any attack that any monster does has the ability to crit, which does um, an obscenely larger amount of damage than the normal attack would do and is one of the the primary oh. things that can kill almost any run because even someone like phoebe on this next boss can be crit for essentially her entire hp pool yep it's what makes the quote unquote safe boss fights not safe at all like you just never know when one of those safe boss fights is going to crit the secondary character kill them and then all of your secondary characters have the ability to, to heal or to to life and bring you back to life if you die but ben never gets that option like we never pick up life that's in the quarter of the game that we skip so if your secondary character dies you have to have enough damage to get through it or you just kind of die as fast as you can and start over <laughs> so pk did your fight not go very well 
<laughs> it did. Uh, it did not. Ben was dead. Phoebe was twenty six health. Got through it. Oh, but you killed. That's a nice first try. The a friend of mine says life is a resource. <laughs> Use it wisely. You only have to live with one health. <laughs> yeah, she had twenty two more HP than she needed. Um, my count was slightly off because I I didn't never got a second axe hit off. a different strat than i usually see too the the seed in the middle that was something i had kind of given up on because i never had I, I usually relied on ben to do that to get that second seed or not the second seed to get the seed mid fight and he was always just dead yeah that's 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 why i originally lifed him up but at least he meat shielded for you know one hit which is the most i can ask for that guy right now so far i guess uh, let's see, so meat shielding reminds me to talk about defending. Defending in this game is super broken. Um, so let's say, for example, Ben decides to meat shield for Phoebe. We meat shield, defend, just tank basically. Um, if, if we defend, let's say we defend Phoebe with Ben, then Ben is going to take all of the attacks, Ben is going to take all of the damage, if there's an AoE attack that's supposed to hit both of them, Ben will be the only one who takes damage. Uh, so it's super, super strong. If you know that one of your characters needs to do something uh, to get a lot of value and the other character is less value, you can use that lesser value character to defend the higher value character. Make sure you get off a of Thunder, make sure you get off a uh, Flare later on, whatever, um, to make sure that happens and try and eat all of the, um, uh, the status effects that could prevent that otherwise. Yeah, and that's a huge advantage of the the other character having those glitched uh, buffs to certain attacks. Is there's a lot of defending that you're going to do just because they can they can take damage. The, the same hit that would hit Ben for 180 will hit that character for 23. But calamity, what if your partner is under the blind effect? <laughs> <laughs> that just happened to me too. You're sad. Let's, does blind stop? It defense? does. It does. Blind and confuse, I think. Blind confuse. So there's a lot. There's a lot of status effects that will prevent or that will stop the defense from working. Uh, so I guess blind is one of them. Uh, paralyze, petrify, death, obviously, and then um, confusion will stop the uh, the defense from working. Um, so that's something you have to take into consideration, but at least you know that the first status effect is going to happen to the person that you're tanking with and hope that uh, your other person can outspeed them and get the attack off um, before they eat a, a status effect of their the own. The other issue with, with blind is <clears throat> Phoebe in her infinite knowledge, you don't need to be you don't need to be able to see to cast black spells, but if you put Phoebe on auto when she's blinded, she will take that turn to heal herself of that. So you have to basically, if you ever want to use auto again, um, you have to go into your menu and heal Phoebe, even though technically the fire spells would still hit. I win. First double confuse. Oh, there it is. Oh, is he getting through? <laughs> oh yeah, he's through. <laughs> is that a, did, did confused Ben throw the bombs or did, did it break? And then you uh, got the bombs? It broke immediately, thankfully. Oh, that's fortunate. Oh, nice. All right, so Ten picking up his third chest there. That was the heal potions. Uh, that, again, sets up his... Uh, his in Wait, you already have heal potions, don't you? That was Give more heal potions, obviously. More heal potions. Okay, so he's got more <laughs> heal potions. Yeah, I don't know. They do they do some weird thing that saves a bunch of time over back when I actually ran the game. <laughs> it's way faster now and way safer. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, these sphinxes also have the uh, the ability, just like the, um, the centaurs did earlier, to do the confusion... Uh, they will always confuse Phoebe first. Um, and then there's a 50-50 chance if they're going to do the confuse on whether the next one goes on Phoebe or Ben. Um, Ten, fortunately, like got the confuse and then it instantly broke, so it basically just ate a second. I don't know. Not a huge deal. Uh, let's see. So he dropped down. He got the, uh, the noble armor. Another text box. I don't know what it's called. I think it's noble armor. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it gives you a lot of resistance to water and to ice, uh, which being in the ice pyramid, that's a big deal. Um, a lot of the ice damage is going to be reduced uh, by a really significant amount. Like, really significant amount. Um, there have been times where I've forgot about it and then didn't realize until I got to the ice golem coming up and then... But I think something that normally would hit for a hundred something actually hits for four to five hundred. It's a big deal, and then you're sad. 
so oh uh something else i no yeah another route difference they do one of the zero use things different place than i did so way back in aquaria um 10 bought well they both bought zero cure potions that's one thing you can do in this game is you can buy zero cure potions and as long as there are none in your inventory it will put a cure potion in your inventory with a counter of zero and if you use um that potion it will make your potions go from zero to whatever one less than zero is which in what 8 bit or whatever is 255 so now they have 255 cure potions in that spot uh, where it says 99 cure potions and it also messes with the inventory which added a couple extra things uh, to their inventory as well uh, because the game just, just memory things it's, it's magic uh, so we're going to do that a couple times it's going to add some stuff into our inventory which will allow for us to break the game and that's going to happen probably 10 minutes from now if I did throw a time out there but it's happening all the time and never and then very explicitly uh yeah once we finish the first tree run oh speaking of magic um these are not random encounters i forgot to mention that when they first got in here there are not random encounters in this place <laughs> what you're supposed to do when you enter the uh, the ice pyramid here is you're supposed to run to the right um after stabbing the first statue in the face and opening the door. And there is an item called the Magic Mirror, which which makes all of these enemies appear and you can see their their sprites on the, the map like you normally can. Um, but we go fast, so we skip that altogether and we just know where all the fights are, we know what they are. Um, so Ten just finished up the last fight before the Ice Golem. Um, and that's why that's why it's it seemed like there were maybe uh, random fights in this place where there haven't been before they're not actually random you just can't see them yep that's one thing that makes this actually kind of accessible as a speed run is there's no you know there's no step routing per se uh there's no like misstepping this the encounters are always going to be the same um so it's really more about discovering you know how best to get through them and uh, things like that Yep, every fight is going to be some combination of one, two, or three options. And as long as you know what to do for each of them, then you can just plan well, you know, plan ahead on what you're going to do well before you actually get to the next fight. And, you know, when I, when I went back to saying that you can run this very efficiently, uh, that's, I mean, that's one of the big things is you can plan for something that's 10 seconds ahead because you know exactly what's going to happen all the time. Or you have a, you know what of three things could happen. Yep, which, so all the manual yeah. auto weapon switching that you're doing, it's because you're anticipating your next move. And then you're just waiting on RNG at that point, right? Yeah, that's the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so 10's on the ice pyramid, uh, the ice golem fight. Uh, not a whole lot to it. It's usually pretty safe. Phoebe just spams fires. Uh, Ben's just chunking bombs. Um, when he gets to a certain amount of health, when the boss gets to a certain amount of health, uh, they'll start to do the uh, the waterfall thing that you'll see on both of them. It does damage to both of uh, Ten's characters, and it will heal the boss. Um, but as long as the boss doesn't crit Phoebe with his uh, giant stomp or whatever it is, then it's a pretty safe fight. It's just, uh, just a matter of how many heals does he do and you know, how quickly can you get through that, that second phase of healing. Yeah, who he targets also, uh, specifically. Whatever whatever level you end up being also has an impact on your strategy because at level 11 you actually can survive more than one hit at a time before having to heal. But I did not get 11, so hopefully PK does. I did, actually. Yeah. I was just about to point that out. Sometimes lucky. So, um, let's see. This will be the last dungeon that we have to walk out of. Ow. Slowly. Very slowly. Very slowly. Stop hitting Phoebe! Oh, that crit! Oh, yeah, <laughs> <second Ooh>. crit. <laughs> Let's see, just watching PK's Ice Golem fight now. So that that stomp is the uh, the only attack that Ben can't take two of, unfortunately. So, oh, okay. And he so used that, it against Ben twice. That was that was actually really nice, though. So 
Yeah. Um, Phoebe will pri- if, she, if Phoebe's on auto, she will prioritize healing or um, or resurrecting over anything else. So if you put her on auto when one of your characters is under half health, if she has the uh, the ability to do so, she's going to cure that partner. So uh, PK, uh, let's see, planned input to throw bombs at the boss and had Phoebe on auto while Ben was under half health. So that, that leaves one of two options. One of two things is going to happen. Either Phoebe's going to cure Ben, and Ben will be at full health and be able to survive a hit, or actually better, the boss hits Ben, kills Ben, then Phoebe is going to resurrect him, and um, Ben gets his attack off as though he hadn't died, and so you get basically a free heal along with that turn, yep. which was what happened there. So it's always nice when that happens. Very fortunate. Also, this is this is round two of, of for whatever reason they just leave Ben right at the very end of the dungeon. Like instead of walking out and leaving at the end, they just it's like I, I've always found that entertaining. Like we're all gonna there's only one exit to this place. Why can't we just walk out together? And when you fall, because you were falling at the end of that boss fight, there's a particular spot that you need to fall at, right? Correct. If you if you don't move over that one tile and down, you land on the the opposite side where you initially hit the statue, and that costs you 10, 15 seconds if you don't move that one tile. So it's it's relatively important to the to the run because now we're about to come into uh, another amazing phase of RNG, which is where ten's at. Ten is in the exit battleground, which is the uh, the first. Well, first, I don't know if it's the first. It's not the first. There's a lot of RNG in this game. This is one of the bigger portions of RNG. You have two options of fight in this game. You can either get the squid or you can get the squid and his friend with wings. Uh, if you get the squid with friend, then 95% of the time or so, they're going to go first. They're going to do their attacks, and you just have to run away. Like, you can't kill them both because you're going to get confused. You're going to get chunked and die. Um, so, ideally, you don't get any sphinxes. You just get 10 squids. You bomb the squids. You get out quick. I think that was three or four sphinxes so far. Is that a three? It looks like three. Three so, so far. Uh, three is uh, it's about average. I can't see how many. Uh, let's see. Is that four of ten left? Okay, so three in the first six fights is well, actually still about average. <laughs> it's not terrible. It just feels terrible. Ain't that the truth, Colin? Ain't that the truth? <laughs> One of the things about the RNG in this game is what feels pretty average for RNG just feels so terrible most of the time. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's one of those areas where you actually want a poor exit battlefield in like the PB splits you're running against because when you have a good one, uh, it, it just feels terrible to lose a bunch of time holding A, facing a bunch of squids. That is one of the the nice things about this game is you don't have to mash in the um. If you're going to keep doing the same thing over and over in like from one combat to the next, you can just hold down the A button and it will it will maximize the inputs, like frame perfect the inputs. Um, so that is nice, at least. Uh, let's see. So here, um, one of the things. Oh, celebratory bomb. Correct bomb. There we go. Uh, so RG one of the things. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, so one of the things that. Uh, that 10 put into his uh, inventory when he used the zero cure potions and overflowed his inventory was the venus key which unlocks the venus chest which has the venus shield uh, that shield gives you more defense and it also makes you immune to paralysis i think that's the one thing that it adds that's right paralysis which is a big deal overall it takes um you lose seven seconds over the quote-unquote faster route uh, so basically, if you get paralyzed, or if you would have gotten paralyzed one time throughout the entire rest of the hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes of the run, um, then you've saved that seven seconds. So, pretty safe. Uh, let's see. And I am coming do? up on the hardest fight in the game. The, the hardest best fight, fight in the game. <laughs> get the outspeed, get the outspeed. It exists. So I think this uh, this uh, mummy has seven attacks, and three of them can can keep you from taking your turn. He has a sleep. He has a I got the outspeed oh, on turn two. What? <laughs> oh wow! It can paralyze. It can petrify. It can sleep. Um, I think those are the three things it can do, and all of those keep you from being able to kill it. So generally, like you're you're not at risk of dying 
which by the way if you die in this game if it happens have we nobody's i don't think either of you have died yet but if you die in this game you get the option of just restarting the fight and then you just restart the fight there's no like starting from your last save file so it's super friendly in that regard if you die you just restart the fight from exactly where you're at um and with that mummy fight Clarify you're not why. just to but, clarify uh, why i'm so hyped about sure. that it's literally the second time i've ever had that happen in thousands of runs wait seriously oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, getting the outspeed on that mummy is... I thought it was impossible for a long time. Yeah, there's a, right. typically a very straightforward turn order. And if you ever hear someone say speed or outspeed, it means either like the boss jumped ahead of someone's turn or Ben somehow managed to go fast for once. So this area where they're both at right now, uh, this is post, like this is after the quarter of the game that we're supposed to skip. Like right now, 10 and uh, PK should be level 16 or 17 probably. And they're level 11, so they are significantly under level. They have a lot less health. Uh, they have a lot less, well. Oh, everything. here it comes. Okay, nope. get up, buddy. Okay. Nope. Okay. Wait, okay. Don't miss. All right, we're good. <laughs> both got through a first try. Nice job. Um, so the exit spell, by the way, will exit just about anything in the game. It will just remove it from the fight, uh, which is super convenient. So we just got to this area where we're super under leveled, we're super under geared, we have low health, we have low speed, uh, but we have an ability that will one shot basically everything that isn't a boss. Like I think exit, I'm trying to think, what doesn't exit work on other than bosses? I don't think there is anything. Ah, uh, the eyeballs. Oh, and things that will reflect spells. <laughs> Yep. Uh, which we'll run into later on. So there's not very many things that Exit won't just remove from the game. Uh, so effectively, we've gotten past uh, earlier when I said there was the uh, the half of, half of the game where you don't have good spells and the half of the game where you do have good spells. We're in the half of the game where you do have good spells because Exit is a very, very good spell. Uh, the only quote-unquote downside is that you don't get experience from anything that you've exited, but we don't need it. We, we plot that into our... Uh, into our run so and because it is a white spell it does have that roughly 10 percent chance to miss right also uh hi ruben bye ruben yeah. i know it's late <laughs> i know that's late very late but i just wanted to point yeah it's it's you discover that ruben's just been with you the whole time for some reason the running joke when he uh when he gets uh chunked off the side by that mummy is that we dropped our sandwich because ruben falls off the cliff the puns it's so good all right anyways uh, let's see. So, so Ten has just bought zero seeds, and he's going to use that zero seed, which changed the cure potions into sky coins. He bought 32 cure potions, which was a very specific number to change the inventory, to add more stuff into his inventory, to break the game even more. Um, and I'll remember exactly what that did when he gets there, and I remember exactly what's in his inventory. It probably added this little warp tile that he can use to go back to Aquaria, or is this Windia? Are you alright, Aquaria? Is Aquaria. So, which is exactly where we needed to go next. Um, and there's probably other stuff too. I don't know. I'll remember later. Stop um, the ghosts. Ten is torching me right now. It's okay. You can still, you can, if, if there's any room to improve, you know, to change <laughs> anything, it's the Zuzu's tower. Oh, this, and this, normal, these solar areas coming up. The tree can this be is, very, very. This is what you get for getting third place. All right, PK. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention PK. Uh, just to, it was you took third place a couple weeks or a couple days ago, right? Yeah, it, yeah, uh, eight nine days ago probably. Yep, it was a crazy run, like bad RNG and still beat my best time by a minute and a half. That's that's awesome. Yeah, so, so I did. Calm was the previous third place. Um, we'll see it at the end. Uh, I'm sure I'll bring it up then. But I was on pace to be about ninety to hundred seconds faster than what I ended with. <laughs> In, and lost it all back in the last five or six minutes. So this game, it, the race is not over by any means at any point, but uh, early lead is definitely still a nice thing to have. Uh, I've seen I've seen chat pretty much uh, so far ask for floor one and floor six. So, <laughs> well, floor two, I, I'll ahead. take the floor six. Floor two means more Mystic Quest. Floor six means faster runs so it's win-win let's see so pk doing his uh his zero seed and 32 potion purchase and let's see 10 is getting kaylee back in the party 
and then he's going to head to the tree. Uh, the Great Tree, which is one of the longer portions of the run. Also one of the more... Um, I feel like there's more variety of different like fights and different things that you that you have to prepare for in the tree than there are in any anywhere else in the game. I feel like that's one of the more practice. Yeah, this is where you, you really have to start like knowing exactly what you have to do for each individual oh, no. possibility. I went to get Kaylee too soon. I was thrown off. <laughs> Say, so, uh, if we, I don't know who's. Uh, side we have sound on but if it's on pks this is like the ch just the music is just so chill for now and then we get to uh this place I always think of that music as the uh, like the night in the Ro night at the Roxbury, the elevator ver music version of the song. <laughs> and they're like very slowly like turning their heads to the side. Let's see. So ten picking up the arrow spell there, which is uh, another very powerful spell. Uh, you're going to see a lot of use of both arrow and exit um, from Ben throughout most of the rest of the run until we get to the top of Pazuzu's tower. Um, the ups and downs, the pros and cons of both. Exit is faster, but has a chance to miss. I think right now our chance to hit is up to about 85%. Um, it's about twice as fast of an animation, but can miss. And then Arrow does... Uh, it's just slower, but it will never miss. So I, it, it, you do what... You know, you kind of go with what you feel, whether you use uh, lots of arrows or lots of exits, but exit is statistically faster if you don't get... Mystic Quest RNG. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, there are also, a lot of things that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say also uh, another pro to using arrow is that you can AOE with it instead of single target. Exit can only single target. So on the the fight that tends on, you want to kill that. You want to beat that fight using two AOE arrow spells, which you can't do with exit. Go ahead, PK. Oh yeah, I just it, especially in this tree, there are. There's a, a lot of debate over. We were discussing this in the green room, but it, you know, theoretically, some of, there are some things that you know, would be the fastest. But things like the claw have a instant death proc, but whether that happens or not determines whether that was the right move to make or not. After you know, in hindsight, yeah, it always feels like you you do the do the practice you do the research figure out what the right move is and then you do the run and it's the wrong move <laughs> happens a lot hey, uh, have has anybody touched on the the like side effects of all the different weapons like magic boost and all that stuff i can do that so Perfect. um <clears throat> the axe I, I does the axe even have one is it higher damage or is it just kind of there I think the axe is just kind of there. Yeah, I um, think that's just a, the one thing that doesn't have something. Yeah, they, they just didn't care about the axe. Poor axe. Uh, the sword will give you five points of extra speed. The claw will give you five points of extra magic. And the uh, the bomb specialty is that you can use them on the overworld. And they also do AOE damage, and they do a ton of damage. Uh, so depending on what, we're, if we're trying to use spells, um, like exit, for example, we'll probably have the sword equipped so that we can hopefully go first. Um, if we're trying to do stronger spells like arrow and, and we're worried about damage, we'll equip the claw. Uh, if we're trying to do AOE physical damage on things that maybe can spell reflect, uh, that, which there's a couple in the tree as well, then we'll use the bombs. And uh, if we're chopping trees, we'll use the axe, and that's about it for the axe. Please no. Oh, I should run from that. Uh -oh, oh, there's no. a nice little... <clears throat> oh. first, first death, we're sad. Yeah, these mummies are disgusting. They're, they can, it, it's that that hardest fight in the game. But there's three of them. All the status effects, all Please the element. Oh, yep. And this might be death to you. Probably death to you. Wait, wait, no, maybe. Oh. Oh, it definitely is. Okay. Yep. I, I wasn't sure if you had an, an arrow queued up there. Yeah, mummies are gross. <laughs> mm. Oh, and uh, yeah, you can also use the claw as a hookshot as well once you get to the uh, the blue one that they have. 
And oh also, my dear, mummies, why? <laughs> this is so, actually unreal. So remember earlier that we were talking about like RNG kind of being, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> This is this is where RNG likes to have fun. I should have just run. Should have just run for two. So one other thing about the claw, they they can use it as a, as a hook shot, but also as you upgrade it, it gets different status ailments that you can inflict on an enemy, uh, and you'll see them try and take advantage of that a couple times. Uh, this blue claw, which is the uh, each weapon has three upgrades available to us. And this claw is the third upgraded claw. It has the petrify ability, which will one-shot uh, anything that it petrifies. So you'll see you'll see them take advantage of that a couple times throughout the run, um, where they just try and petrify something and kill it outright. Uh, where the claw doesn't do a bunch of damage, but one-shotting with petrify does a bunch of damage. So you just hope you get that. Hope you get that roll. All right, PK cleaning up the rest of the forest on his way into the tree with a mustache. Someone in chat called it a Deku tree. Deku tree. Yeah. And the, <clears throat> the very creative naming structure, again, is just called giant tree. Oh, now a three mummy fight goes just absolutely swimmingly. Perfect. <laughs> Were you level 12 at the, the previous one? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember. It, once you hit level 12 with uh, with Ben, that gives you enough spell power with the claw that you can arrow one of them with Kaylee and then do an AoE arrow with uh, with Ben to kill the other two. Ben, ben never got a turn mm -hmm. off the entire time I was doing that fight. Uh, um, yeah. If mummies do mummy things, then it just doesn't matter. All right, tree. I like to call this place the, the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> um, oh, so I noticed you, that you talked earlier about skipping what Firebird the first time we eventually did go back. But did you explain why there's so much uh, cloud structure going around this tree area now? Thank you for pointing that out. So the, the reason there's so many clouds over the rest of the map, which are going to be there for the rest of the run, by the way, um, is because the trigger that gets rid of all of those clouds I, is something having to do, I think, maybe with beating the last boss of that Fireberg area that we skipped. And since we're not doing that, we skipped the, the cloud trigger, which means um, we're just going to be running through clouds for the rest of the game, which is which is fine. All the, all the towns and locations are all in the same place. We just remember what's where and how many nodes to travel in what direction to get to where we're going. It's really cloudy up way more than it is windy. Uh. It's true. You would think if it was ah. windy, it wouldn't be cloudy. Uh. But it is both cloudy uh, and windy. <laughs> well, I just got instant <laughs> death again. Instant death is one of the great things about this run. Maybe not here, but let's just go on later on. And Yeah. Yeah, the RNG, the RNG just never let, lets up for just so many different reasons. Yeah, so just slowly working their way through these uh, these frogs. Dude, frogs in this game are so rude. Uh, they also have a lot of status. They're basically all the uh, the brood enemies in this game are just status ailments. None of them really do enough damage to really make a difference. Oh, that that would have been a, uh, a paralyze that got prevented by the Venus Shield, so the new route saved him there. Or maybe it didn't save, but definitely helped. Um, so really useful that they go and get that. Uh, yeah, most of the most of the dangerous enemies don't do a lot of damage. There's like one enemy in the entire rest of the run that does damage that we're worried about, and that's the mages in Pazuzu's tower when they do Quake, which is severely overtuned, and I'm sure we'll see that. But other than that, it's just status ailments, and the, the amount of status ailments that can screw up a fight is pretty atrocious. And I'm sure we'll see plenty of that. Yeah. Mm. Well, my, we my, zomb have. my zombie fight was a good indication of what happens, because if one of the characters on your team takes the stone, then you, you really are on your back feet for anything. Yeah. 
And sometimes it's actually faster just to die and start the fight over again than it is to try and heal a petrify on your teammate and and then save yourself from there. It's just quicker to die and hopefully get the one shot in the next try. Let's see. Who's close to an ooze? Ten's close to an ooze. He's, Ten's gonna have an ooze in his next fight. So, uh, and PK could be getting an ooze in, in this fight. Nope, he gets the double worm. Good RNG. Uh, so these oozes are, are, I think, our first, um, our first spell reflectors. Um, the reason that they're doing physical attacks to them is because they will do spell reflect damage right back in your face. And it, it's, it, there are some games where if you get a spell reflected back at you, it like reduces the damage. Nope, if you arrow those things, they will arrow you just as strong right back and you will, Kaylee will absolutely one shot herself. In this not game, that I've ever not, done that or not. not apologize. No, nobody's ever done that. Never no. done that against Psych Shield either. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, it, it hurts even worse against Psych Shield because it's a pattern. Like, that's yeah. like, you can keep track of that. So anytime, anytime you accidentally cast a spell into Psych Shield, it's it's like, man, I just wasn't counting. And it's, I was hoping he was gonna out. He was gonna out speed kills. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Let's see, let's see. We're chopping a very particular path through the Mushroom Kingdom and killing the oozes and killing things and. Like you can just see how many different options there are for different enemies uh, through this place. We've seen skeletons, we've seen scorpions, we've seen mummies, we've seen trees, we've seen oozes. And I don't even think that's all the stuff we're going to see, and maybe, I don't know, but there's all kinds of different variations of them. So planning ahead uh, and you know, fi figuring out, what, remembering what the next fight is and how to prepare for it when there's so many different options in this place, is uh, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of, a lot of work. Yeah, the menuing is is really part of what makes this run really entertaining. Um, switching between things, back and forth, kind of trying to, you know, on the fly figure out where you are and what you need to do is a, a big contributor to the to the people who have quite good times at this game. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of pointers to keep track of, like um, your, I think. I don't know, I haven't played this long enough to remember exactly what stays the same and what doesn't, but kind of goes to kind of goes to say there's a lot of stuff that you have to keep track of that I don't even remember it anymore. Yeah, kind, like of, with I, that be, kind of with that being said, uh, I do have a question because I've seen it happen. Sure. Like you get into an enemy and then you run away because maybe you want diff a different set of enemies to pop up. But if you get into a situation, uh, let's just say you get the same enemy over and over and over again, it's quicker just to go ahead and fight that or do you want to constantly run until you get the right pattern. So it depends on the uh, it depends on what spot you're at. There are some fights like actually in this tree, for example, there was uh, there was one floor where they came up and uh, hook shot it across. And then there were four worm fights in a row. Those four worm fights had a 50 50 chance of either having two or three worms. Um, and it's actually faster mathematically to run from the three worm fight and hope for the 50-50 on the next roll to get the two worm fight, one shot it, and get through that fight faster than if you had just fought the three worms when you got to them. Uh, but then as soon as you go into the next room, there's a chance for two worms, three worms, or two worms with an ooze. And so now that there's three chances, um, or three different options, it's slower, um, it's slower to run away and, and try and get the correct fight. So you just, you're, you just take the fight that you have and, and run with it. So it just depends on what options um, are presented by each of the different sprites and, and knowing what they all are and whether you can run or should run or should just suck it up and fight. And, I mean, just to addend that, yes, in theory, but then I've had runs where I've drawn three worms so many times that I just, you know, give up and yeah, I decide got, to fight the three worms. <laughs> I got three worms 11 times in a row on a 50-50 roll one time, and it's... I, I, I've, I've spent hours, like, in the tree just, like, theory crafting and testing like okay where is it faster to run where is it faster not to and like statistically it is faster to run away from three worms and hope for two if it's a 50 50 chance and then you get the 11 in a row or even like three in a row and you're just like okay do i just like throw out all of that time that i spent because in the real world it just doesn't matter yep 
And then, like, if you t if, when you have to take three worm fights, you could technically double air a wall, or you could be methodical and try to take them down one by one. But it all comes down to what you know spells or attacks they use against you, or if Ben goes at faster or slower. So there, there's right answers, but there, there really are no right answers as long as you know what your options are. Also, um, earlier when you were on using the claw to climb up the tree wall, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. And okay. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever fallen from that? Uh, yes. yes. Never, never, ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm too My last Ten run, I did has that. Has never fallen from that while I was watching and stream this this game, and then decided that that was the end of the run. I mean, it's the end of the run if you fall. It, it probably kills thirty to forty-five seconds. I don't know if there's any extra fights that you have to take, but it, there's a lot of running back to to get to where you were. Yeah, it sends you back to somewhere you've already been. I think depending on where you fall. So it's just it's just the feeling yeah, not of Not that I have any walk. experience with it, but <laughs> it doesn't take that long to get back. But it, it is annoying, I, I would imagine. No, Ten's never done that. He's the professional of us, of us that all. That is Kaylee's third miss. <laughs> all right, so we got we got Ten getting to the Gidra fight. Uh, Gidra's not super, super dangerous um, until until they are. Uh, so yeah. Gidra... <laughs> So Gidra can two shot uh, can two shot Ben, uh, and it feels bad when that happens. Uh, but it also gives us the option of setting Kaylee to auto and lifing, which he didn't do. Questionable. Cool. That was good. <laughs> Always full send. But he, oh, and that's the other thing is that Com uh, Gidra has the option to petrify, and then likes to petrify both characters like that, and you start the fight over. So. It's hey, not a super dangerous fight unless he just uses the status effects. This is something you're gonna see across a lot of the next boss fights. Is they have instant kill, and they can do it twice, and then you're just done. Let's get more. Yeah, I definitely went just a little too full send on that one. <laughs> This is uh, in for inadvertent doggo stream. Hello, Chesta. <laughs> so, so that's what we're looking for is for, um, for well, not looking for, but it works when it happens. Ben dies, Kaylee reses, and Ben gets his attack anyways. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So, fortunately, fortunately, Ben's at full health, so he can heal. As long as it doesn't crit, it doesn't. Then he gets the petrify off, and then... Should be smooth sailing from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh maybe. Hearing oh, this without being able to see it, I know exactly what's happening still. <laughs> Get your down. Get your yes. down. All right, so the developers wanted to spell something out in the trees. I think they were trying to spell go on, kid, but they didn't put space, so it just says, like, goon kid. I don't, I don't know. And the tree is moving underneath the clouds. You just can't see it because clouds. And so d what it's doing is it's carrying Ten to the other side of the forest that they just cleared out, and that's the, the lore or something. And so now he's not quite done. He's not exiting out of the tree. He's got one more thing left to pick up. We're going to get our first wizard spell of the run, which is Meteor. Meteor is an incredibly long uh, animation, but it also does a ton of damage. Like, it's going to two-shot... Or it's going to one-shot a lot of stuff that... Uh, well, it's going to open up a lot of one-shots that we didn't have before, which is going to be really nice for the rest of the run until we get uh, Flare, which is going to one-shot most of the stuff that Meteor can't. So we're going to be using a lot of that uh, from here on out. So I one always, of the, Go ahead, sorry. You're good. Wait, I always consider, like, at this point, when you get Meteor is when, like, the RNG just kicks it into overdrive for okay. boss fights. All right, so we got Meteor, so he's going to seed on everyone, he's going to cure up, and then he's going to exit out. And we're going to go to uh, with the town the town with the wind. Uh, oh yeah, Windia. <laughs> Chicago, I think it's what it's called. <laughs> All right, so first thing he's going to do is go in here and buy 31 cure potions. That's going to do something. Uh, that's part of the new route. It does some inventory magic. Um, 
it, it yeah, it kind of helps reset uh, your inventory lineup to where everything was. So we talked to that's the old man with the sunglasses. His name is Otto. Oh, and let's see. So this uh, this house that tends going in, he's going to buy the locket. Or he's going to chop her in half with an axe and then buy the locket. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> All right, and then so. GDQ actually had roots in this game back when it came out. Uh, they knew what the story of Spike Vegeta was going to be well before Spike Vegeta. So this this is Spike Vegeta, the bomb vendor. We love Spike, and of course, if Spike was going to sell a weapon, oh, no. he would sell bombs. So Spike gives us the bombs. Thanks, Spike. We love you. And now I think we're going to pour it out, and we're going to go to Mount Gale, I believe. Looks like it. Okay, so now we're going to Mount Gale. Yeah, sorry, my dogs are going absolutely bonkers right now. <laughs> Dude, what, what is it with like the what hour, hour fifteen, hour ten mark of the stream with like all of our streams <laughs> being assaulted by dogs? You're gonna start a howl. <laughs> Somebody started a howl. Let's get some oh my dogs in chat. It's like a chat full of oh my dog. I don't actually have chat up. I'm trusting. Oh, that's one heal potion. You have three, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So another thing is like, you can see that PK is, uh, let's see, Kaylee is at just over half health, but nothing is going to kill her at this point, short of Petrify, which we can't control. So we know we don't need a cure yet. Um, this is called YOLOing. Uh -oh. No, we're YOLOing. Yep. Gonna be close, I think. Yeah, one more. Oh, nice. Okay, good. All right, so PK is the now. You, you missed Ben getting crit at 600. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it's been fun boss fight so far. Goon kid. Goon kid again. Goon kid. <laughs> so back in uh, back in Firebird, when I was talking really quickly about what Ten and PK were doing when they bought the Zero Seeds and then used the Zero Seeds. What that does is it drops you to, well, drops you quote unquote from Zero Seeds to 255 Seeds. So we're probably going to use another 30, maybe 40 in the entire run. So effectively you have infinite Seeds, which means we have infinite spell cast, which is great considering uh, right before that I think was when we got Exit and then now we have, um, we have Meteor and we're going to have Flare and so uh, our secondary characters are going to have strong spells as well, and now we have infinite spell cast. So we are very. Th this whole rest of the game is just glass cannon, and we just hope we're more cannon than glass. Uh, so we have to arrow on on ten side. We have to arrow these um, these skeletons because they're undead, and life doesn't work on undead because the game is backwards. Uh, so we have to arrow those, and then we can meteor down the other two. Uh, he's got the sword equipped because the, we know that the sword does enough damage to kill those two off. Um, whereas there are some fights where maybe we need the claw in order to do enough damage. Um, so he's opting for the sword to hopefully um, outspeed whatever, everything. I know this is wrong, but I would like to just have my menu set for the boss fight just in case you're curious, Colin. Okay. Okay, so uh, Ten's doing his last menu pre Gidra, not Gidra, pre uh, Dullahan, one of those. With uh, more text boxes that say things. I don't know. There's dialogue. And now we're in the, um, the Dullahan fight. Let's see. Dullahan is also really mean because he can't petrify, but he can Doom Dance, and Doom, uh, Doom Dance just straight up kills. And if he does Doom Dance on Kaylee, then you lose the fight. Like no questions asked, unless you happen to be at the very end and just are fortunate enough to live one hit and uh and kill him before he kills you this is this is somewhere we're not having um not having life is really punishing if things go wrong uh one of the things he did there was he used kaylee's one of their heal spells uh he used the spell heal he's going for it he's going for it oh man of the people <laughs> told so, you always full sent he got it no, well, maybe for a turn. Got it for a turn. So what heal will do is it will put one of four or five um, status ailments, and you can get paralyzed, and you can paralyze a boss, and it's possible for that paralyzed to last the entire fight to where 
uh, Delahan just doesn't take any more turns. And you just throw meteors at him, angry meatballs, until he dies. Um, and you got him for one turn, which is which is still nice. Um, I think statistically it's not worth it at all. Also, you can miss because it's a white spell. Uh, <laughs> but it's like super swag when you get the, the paralyzed and Delahan just kind of stands there and gets meatball in the face. Plus you get oh, the wonderful the animation too. Own bed. It was on it was on uh, on Ben, so we're okay. Just res and keep going. Also, um, this is I I, I want to say the best spell name in the game. The uh, the AOE AOE attack is called Hedumerang, which is which is great. <laughs> That's one of the few text boxes I've taken the time to stop and read because Hedumerang is is wonderful. It's a name. It's one of those abilities that, that they, they didn't rush through. They were they were rushing through the names of the cities so they could come up and really take the time to come up with the <laughs> they, spent, they spent all that time trying to come up with the Doomerang, but they just <laughs> totally forgot they hadn't named any of the locations. I mean, this is the only game that I know of, of the Final Fantasy lore that has their main character called Benjamin. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Doing some RNG manip by using the Sky Coins that shouldn't be in the inventory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now he's headed back to Windia. Uh, now he's going to go talk to Otto again, and Otto is going to unlock the first half of what is known in the lore as, the, I think, the Rainbow Bridge. Uh, and that Rainbow Bridge, it, you're going to be able to walk across it into Pazuzu's Tower. Pazuzu's Tower is by far the biggest source of RNG in this entire game. Here's how it works. He's going to walk into the tower. He's going to... This is Otto's daughter. He's going to talk to Otto's daughter. He's going to fight his way up the staircase on the right. At the top of that staircase is going to be a giant bird called Pazuzu. Pazuzu is the very epitome of RPG jerk bird. Birds are jerks. Yes. <laughs> uh, from, once you talk to him, he's going to disappear to one of five places, either floor one, floor two, floor four, floor five, or floor six. Uh, the way the tower works is you have to ascend all the way to the top, which is floor seven, and then you come down from there. Um... So ideally, you want floor six. You go up to seven, you come down to floor six, he's right there, you just fight him, you're done. As soon as you fight him, you leave. Um, from there, I think floor one is the second fastest. It's very close to floor five. Um, it depends on how many fights, because there are some fights you have to take getting up to floor five. Uh, so like five and one are tied for second place, then floor four, and then floor two. If you get floor two, if Pazuzu's on floor two, it adds 12 minutes? Over a floor six? Not sure the exact numbers because I don't ever practice floor two because if I don't get floor six, I reset. Uh, but it adds a bunch of time and it just, you, you just lose time and there's nothing you can do. So we're hoping for floor six. Please no. Or we're hoping for floor two because more Mystic Quest. And just more you did miss the yeah. step where you uh, end up crying a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try not to cry, start crying. <laughs> and this is, in, if I'm correct, this is one of the things in Final Fantasy that since people started speedrunning, they've been researching and researching and researching how to maintain a 4-6. Correct? I've, I've done some of that, and there's... So basically the way... The easiest way to describe the way that the floor is selected, because it is selected by RNG values of 0 to 255, is there are eight tables... And each of those tables has 255 places. And so you, it, even if there's a way to control which table you get to sit at, each of those places at the table changes once every frame. Also insane crit, by the way. Um, yeah. So even if you can control which table you get to sit at, you have to be exactly frame perfect with zero. Like there's no way to buffer. There's no way to slow down that timer. So really, in order to like guarantee a floor six is not particularly plausible, unless there's just some magic that none of us are aware of yet. It's kind of crazy. What you have to do is you jump twice. You jump two old people in the first village. Um, miss. Oh. And then so, you you use the claw to boost yourself one frame, and then you get floor two. So, did you get Doom Danced and then the arrow killed anyways? 
It, it looked like it. So PK, so PK got uh, the Doom Dance on Kaylee, which fortunately can miss, and it did. Yeah. Uh, but also fortunately, it looked like the uh, the follow up immediate like spell killed. Dolan. I was on defend. He was he was one away. Um, okay, nice. nice. Maybe no, the double was. He was he would have needed to do that a turn prior to absolutely tank okay. that. Yeah, so that's high level strats too, is knowing where, how much health the boss has, like how many different hits it takes of each different type to, to kill. So if you know that you're one arrow or one meteor away from killing, then you can use the other character to, to defend. And if they eat a, a Doom Dance and they die, it's okay because you just, the next spell is going to kill. So knowing that is really high level strategy for, uh, for making sure that you kill a boss. There, there have been plenty of fights where I didn't realize that I was only one spell away. And so I cured, and then I got double petrified and died and had to restart the fight where I could have just attacked uh, and had a guaranteed kill and just didn't know it. Are we missing with axes again? Yep, we're missing with axes again. So these eyeballs also have the spell reflect. Um, so, oh, <laughs> the blind hit, that's crazy. I, I feel like hitting with blind is so hit difficult, like probably 20% hit rate or something at that point. It's really low. Um, always full send. Always. There's really nothing else to do in the, those positions, though, so you might as well swing for it, because you can't defend, because you can't defend when you're blind. Yeah. And on those fights in particular, like, you, if you cure the, if you heal the blind off, then you're very likely to get blinded just again. Like, the, yeah. the things always start with blind in their first turn, those eyeballs do, so just Kaylee is going to get blinded in her first turn. Lots and lots of misses right now. Intense just being inaccurate. You can do it. I have faith. That makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is this Hellway? Okay, we're in Hellway. Hellway is another fun spot. Um, I trust Possum is keeping score. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> like oh unfortunate okay so these these things are the reason that we play the u.s version instead of the japanese version <laughs> this core has three of these it's uh three of these manta cores um three different times and they can go first they can petrify it they can paralyze they can they do a ton of damage uh ben's dead there and hopefully kaylee can outlast the other two it's going to be sketchy if either one of them does a petrify then you just restart the fight these things are so brutal wait Wait, got a hit. Okay, we hit. So we're out of the first fight. <laughs> Ben's dead. Kaylee's half health. It's 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 a rough time. Whew. And that's the first of three. Second fight. Life and auto. Life goes first. Hits. All right. That's what you love to see. A lot of times the uh, it always feels like the one that she targets with life always seems to be the one that goes first if any of them are going to. And so they're going to get all three attacks in that case, and it just feels bad. But that was very smooth. Very clean second fight. And yeah, and typically enemy, enemies in there you can use arrow on if you want to be more accurate. But not the chimeras. Can you arrow? Doesn't kill. That's, yeah. Oh. Okay, this is rough because... Okay. I think I think he lived that one, right? Oh yes, eight points, and it hits. <laughs> Kaylee petrified, uh, ban at eight. Life's a resource. You only have to live with eight. <laughs> All right, so that's the hellway. We're through the hellway. No death. That's insane. That's that's really fortunate. Yeah, really. Wow. Okay, so these mages that uh, the ten's fighting, these are the ones that have the quake spell, which. I don't know if it's actually, um, well, maybe we'll see it. Are we going to see it? Yo, we see it. Ten's dead. <laughs> it's a one shot. So I think the, I don't know if the actual thing, but it does way more damage than any of the other quakes in the game. And it's, it's said that it's like written as like a meteor spell or like balanced as a meteor spell. Oh, fork. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it does a ton of damage, and that's like the only place in the entire game now where damage is actually a concern, because uh, it will actually do half of uh, Ben's, like, right around maybe a little more than half of Ben's health, so that's something that has to be paid attention to, but other than that, it's just status effects, status yeah. ailments. 
I mean, the wizards have other spells. They just choose not to use them a majority of the time. <laughs> <laughs> they have other things they could be doing. I just love that, that Quake Meteor spell. I'm not sure if it's been noticed yet, but you may ha you may have seen that sometimes. Some of, like As you progress throughout the game, some of the enemies uh, that you see on the map are actually just mm. like reskins of bosses. Yes. They they reuse they reuse a lot of the skins in this game. Uh, the Manticore is uh, the Manticore Chimera whatever that no that's that's Chimera the Chimera is Ghidra. Um, they've got the mages in different places. That's the same mage that was in the Ice Pyramid. Uh, what else? The uh, the Manticore is in the Hellway or this the crab you'll skin. see you'll see sort of the the squid that you fight shows up. They just sort of join the join the party. I feel like once you've defeated them. Unlike your, unlike your party members who decide to leave after the boss fight. Yeah. If you're wondering emotionally the toll of running this game, just watch 10 <laughs> body language every time something misses. It, it feels so bad. <laughs> Can we YOLO this last fight? Nope. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I may actually lose my mind. This is why this game game sells for eleven dollars is people are trying to get rid of their cursed copies. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my or the god. five attacks. How many misses in a row is that? I think that was four out of five. At like eighty or ninety percent. That's actually insane. <laughs> Then you uh you, you doing okay over there, buddy? I think I may have had an <laughs> aneurysm. Holy cow! Big why? Hey, if anybody wants to run this game, it's really fun. <laughs> um, feel free to pick it up. It's real cheap. You'll be able to get Ten's copy on eBay in about an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So going back to the claw, we said there were a couple of places where we're gonna try and <clears throat> try and get the one shot, and he just got it there. Um, since they spell reflect that, they'll, they'll spell reflect AOE as well. Uh, so you got it. You have to do physical attacks, and uh, the best thing to do is hope for a petrify. And he's actually gotten it twice. Unfortunately, the first time was in between four out of five misses. That was the one hit. <laughs> And there are a lot of different formations as you get towards this Suzu fight, particularly on this, this one floor. <clears throat> you hope not to have to ever face these eyeballs. Yeah, there's a chance for the eyeballs not to be there, and uh, you're just sad when they are, because <clears throat> there's a chance in every fight for them not to be there, and every time they are, you have to like plan, or you specifically have to plan around them, because you can't just cast spells in their face. So, uh, let's see, PK is on floor 7, he's on the roof, um, 10 has just come off the roof, he's on floor 6. He's about to get our other wizard spell. He's about to get the other wizard spell, the granddaddy of the wizard spell, he's about to get flare if he stops missing ever. <laughs> We're also about to find out what, uh, what type of floor he's gonna get. Exactly. Oh, and the mage cured it. Oh no. Oh, Ten having a really feels bad man tower. <laughs> it makes it through. This is why being behind, it really comes down to floor. It, it absolutely And does. just any bad encounters for anybody you're like, quote unquote, racing against. So Flare pretty much has the potential to one shot anything. Any set of two for the rest of the game, and some sets of three. It's an incredibly powerful spell, and we're going to take as much advantage of that as we can uh, throughout the last 45 minutes or so of the run. Uh, unfortunately, we can't use it here because the eye. Like, this is why we really hope that we don't run into eyes, is because we want to be able to use our st stupidly powerful magic attacks, and we just can't. Not here. All right, so blind, so probably switches to arrow here. Yep, and does, because... Um, Blind affects the life spell it's the same way it would physical attacks, but arrow will never ever miss. So he switches to that and gets through it. Nice job. Alright, here we go. Floor six. Do we get the floor six? 
the moment of truce, everybody. Or do we continue oh, to kill oh. Batman? Oh, nope. no feet. No. No feet. You always want to see uh -oh. the feet in the elevator. <clears throat> All right, so now, uh, so that thing, that little switch that he hit um, basically puts a block in the elevator. So now Pazuzu can't, like, if he was on floor six, he couldn't move. Uh, he would be stuck there on floor six. If you, like, if he goes to directly to floor five right now and, and Pazuzu's there and he talks to him without hitting the switch on floor four, then Pazuzu just teleports to a different part of the tower. And if you're doing a casual run through of this game, that's that's something that you have to look out for is you have to hit the switches between the floor where he is and the floors that he can go to. So if he's on floor three, you have to, or floor two, you have to hit the floor four and floor two switches so he just can't teleport around. Otherwise, you're just chasing him all over the tower and it's super frustrating. Yeah, the floor six switch is typically, if you're going for a PB, you're now right around an hour and a half into the game and you hit that switch, you don't see feet, that's when you just reset and either start over or, you know, cry in a corner for a while. Right, so 10 went down the stairs, doesn't have a floor five either, so what he's going to do is he's going to fight his way around this uh, this little walkway. And he's going to work his way to a staircase that's a across over there. He's going to go down to floor four. If he, let's see. And we'll see from there. Right now it's just a matter of find the bird. As PK picks up his flare. One bomb to spare, by the way. So close which, to running them out. I'll which actually, them out. If you have zero, it's actually faster to uh, to bomb walls and such because you can still use the bombs on the overworld if you have zero, and it will do the animation and it will blow up the walls and blow up the uh, little whatever you can blow it up with and blow up with it. Um, but it doesn't actually do the bomb animation. Moment of truth is coming up for PK. Flare on the double mage. So the triple mage there isn't as bad. Kaylee kills off one and then and then Ben gets to flare the other two. Alright, let's see. Feet? Feet? No Yo, feet. there's no feet. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see Tenton's face when you heard the yo. That's that's why I did that. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, as far as sporting sporting goes, if if one of us gets floor six, I would have hoped the other one did. But I also, if neither of us get floor six, it feels more sporting as well. All right, so uh, ten doesn't have floor four either, so that means that he either has the second fastest floor or the big sag floor. And we're gonna find out in like two minutes. And I think PK is about to go down to floor five. And do we have a floor five? Don't have a floor five. Ooh, we could have a really long race. <laughs> so uh, Tan is headed over to the left. There's uh, the switches that I mentioned. The floor four switch is over there. There's only switches on the even numbered floors, by the way. There's floor two, floor four, and floor six are the ones that have the switches. So you only have to hit three of them. So normally, I, like if you're going for a good time, even the second, the second best floor, like if you get a floor one or a floor five, you still lose five minutes over getting a floor six. And with the the world record being 152 or 151, something like that, just it's so hard. <clears throat> it's like basically impossible to make up five minutes of lost time uh, in that sense. So you just insta reset and you're just sad, or you just keep going and try and get the practice on. <laughs> on the, the final area that's coming up after this. It is actually an issue when you're, when you start resetting a bunch when you don't get floor six, is you start doing the final dungeon so infrequently that uh, you become more prone to make errors when you are actually on like a PB pace. Okay. All right, so, uh, so PK has floor four. Is that correct? Yep. All right. And I think this is the last fight before Ten finds out what he's got as well. We're gonna find out how close this race is. Oh no! It's oh a no! Race. Oh, oh, oh no! You have floor two. You've got a floor two. Oh Ten, I'm sorry. Bonus Mystic Quest. That's why you're here. Hey, does anybody know how to get to floor two, Pazuzu? 
you can do like I do when I'm testing stuff, and there's a skip where you can like jump. It's uh, it's on the same floor as the switch. <laughs> or it's on the same area as the oh. switch. If you go to the I was left mostly side, being facetious. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> 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 I recall it. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, I the run. Oh, are you out of? Are you out of wizard spells? I wasn't counting the wizard spells. That's right. It's caught up. That's that's the other hard thing about not getting a, like as you're getting to floor six, it's it's a lot easier to keep track of your spells. And since none of us ever practice past floor six, <laughs> there's just no reason to keep going. Uh, keeping track of how many wizard spells you have left is really it's a lot more challenging, or it's just not something we're comfortable with because we don't ever do it. And so it's it's really easy to do like PK just did go into a fight and try and use a, a wizard spell of which you don't have any more casts and it, it, it yeah you just bad. don't track it in your head anymore. Yeah. The other thing about the floor too is you get a whole bunch of these fights like uh, like Ten has like these uh, Sphinx Thanatos eyeball fights are guaranteed in a yep. lot of spots and it's just brutal fights like there's no way around it you just have to fight them and. The, the eyeballs reflecting the magic just takes away all of your ability to address big parties. The amount of added salt in the already salty wound is just really, really sad. Yeah, I will get one empty bomb throw at some point okay. at, uh, in the final dungeon. So, so it looked like 10 defended Ben with Kaylee there, so she takes all the hits. And also, she takes a lot of reduced damage as well, and then Ben flares them in the face. Uh, PK on his last fight prior to Pazuzu. Then you'll see why this is so slow. <laughs> Guess where we gotta go? All the way back. All the way back where we came from. Because you don't fight him here. I mean, I can catch you. I'm in the act of catching you, Pazuzu. Oh, I actually <laughs> forgot the floor four moves too. I knew floor two did. Um, so I guess you can only fight him on even floors or floor six then? No, you fight him on, he goes up to five from four, five. he goes to three from two, yeah, one, yeah. Five, five is an odd number, I, 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 okay. <laughs> so I, I, I just have a, a quick question, instead of maybe trying to fight the loser, have you tried throwing a Pokeball at it? I haven't I personally. Know. Okay, okay. But I, I, I I tried to make a joke there. It, it, if we could manip some sort of master ball, I would be more than more than happy to try to catch Pazuzu on four four. So as you can see, you have to walk all the way back to four. Yeah, so you have to walk all the way back around, and that's the only way to get to four five is going back up to six, back up to seven back around seven, back down the stairwell to five, and now he's got four more fights before he can actually fight Pazuzu. And then ten has to clear the way to Pazuzu on floor two, which is just a whole other hellway of its own. Uh, and then Pazuzu, just like on PK screen, is going to port to floor three, and then at that point, <laughs> fortunately, you can just kind of jump down the stairs, run up the stairs, and fight him on floor three. So this is... All of a sudden, a very close race. Many more fights. You have two more fights until you get to him. When you could have just cheated and Z-axis jumped and called it go called it good, but oh, the jerk bird is the jerk bird for a reason. Yep. Oh, yeah. Welcome to SNES, by the way. This is, I think, PK's first. I think he said it was his first full run through on the SNES console. So, uh... oh, this is Ten's run. Yeah, it would that be my first run? Or I said, yeah, Ten's first run on the, the console. All right, Mr. Bird, show me what you got. Well, at least it's all uphill from here, or downhill, good hill, good direction. It's all better I mean, from it, here. It depends, it depends on the fight, you know. Okay, so Pazuzu. Here's the. This is one of the more intricate fights of the entire run. Uh, Pazuzu has, I think, twenty-two thousand health, and he's got. Uh, a cycle. He's got a pattern where after the first five turns, he's going to do something called sight oh, shield. Oh, that's it. Oh, well, okay. We're, oh, we're going to no. die. Maybe? Is this two that's, and five? That's got to be it. Yeah, no, that's got to be okay. it. <clears throat> so, uh, on his fifth turn, 
Uh, he's going to do something called Psych Shield, which gives him Spell Reflection for the rest of that turn and the next one. Uh, and then he's going to do that again every three turns afterwards. So that's the pattern that we're looking for. We know when we can cast spells, when we can't cast spells. Um, and he also has, as you saw, he's got Petrify uh, ability. He does a ton of damage. Uh, he loves to outspeed Kaylee, so it's really, it's just really hard. It's a real mix-up. There's just so much that can go wrong in this. And you can crit like that. You can crit, and then if Kaylee's on auto, she's going to heal PK. Okay, well, PK's at full health here, so maybe okay. Uh, we had the Psych Shield round, so that was fine. Okay. Good. I mean, not fine, but better than... Not dead. dying, yeah. No! How do you outspeed again? No. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh. That's death number two. Birds are jerks. Come on, bird. Well, we've got yeah, a race now, at least. We do. Oh, yeah. I was doing that just to let you back in, Ten. Don't worry. This is me being polite, not the bird. Yeah, that's the only me. reason I got a floor, too. So I appreciate the, the return. Yeah. <laughs> Very chivalrous here. Yeah, they're tied up, so. That was I was trying to get a little aggressive on that. So the, the one benefit that Ten has over PK. PK is level 19, uh, 10 is level 20, and every five or four math numbers, every four levels, uh, you get another cast of um, a wizard spell. So 10 has five and PK has four. Uh, so for that first five, uh, or cycle of, of five turns before Pazuzu does his, uh, his spell reflect, 10 can fit in another flare that he has uh, the option of, whereas PK would have to switch to arrow. So, so there's the psych shield. Um, usually during the psych shield, you seed, you heal up, um, maybe do some res or curing or something. Uh, PK did an AOE cure there and got lightly hit, so now he's back to full health. That's really strong. Uh, probably hits, yep, hits with the axe because if Kaylee had gone first there, she would have arrowed herself in the face, and I think it does like 2200 damage to herself. It's yeah, it, it kills. It kills, for sure. He only outspeeds when it benefits him. And has a very angry looking Pazuzu. I think something with the colors is making the eyes even more red or pink than normal, and it's like actually kind of terrifying. This is a really close race because, like, remember the di the different boss sprites like kind of tell you how much health is left, and they're both on the same one. Oh, and the best thing is that even after this oh, fight, ten is over, oh boy, it's like even after this fight is over with, there's still enough RNG left for. You know, oh, there is unlimited yeah, RNG so left. Much. Oh come on! Oh, no, oh no! Die die die! Wait, is this a, is this a? Uh... Okay, so he gets to go first yeah. because it's is there enough? Is there enough? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, oh my god! Wow. So PK. See, that's him outspeeding <laughs> Kaylee right there. If he doesn't outspeed Kaylee right there, then we win on that turn. But that's the second just very aggressive time to outspeed Kaylee. So the the benefit of those psych shield turns is that you always get both of your characters to attack first, and so that was that third round in each cycle of three where uh, Pazuzu was going to Psych Shield. Where, so he absolutely outspeeds Benjamin, but because he was doing the Psych Shield, Ben gets to go first. He got that last arrow off to get the kill. Yeah, it was safer than it looked, Ooh. but it should have just ended on the previous turn. Yeah, that was Pazuzu trying to work his, uh, his last turn magic and just <laughs> ruin everything. All right, so here they're going to buy zero cure potions, but they're not going to use them yet. Uh, they're going to talk to Otto again, and that's going to put Ruben in the party, and they're supposed to go, I don't know, somewhere in the plot and go get the Thunder Rock. Um, but we're just going to use those Zero Cure Potions, and if you watch the inventory, it's going to add some stuff to it. Um, wait, is that after the... Maybe we go... Blow no, we Zero here. Okay. And if Zero you here, then we go up. Yeah, if you if you zero before Rupin joins your party, you lock the game. Yeah, <laughs> which I have done in a marathon before, and there's no saving it. I was glad that I was on an emulator and I had another file that I could load. 
<laughs> I uh, yeah, I killed a marathon run before. It was a uh, it was a bad time. Kind of speaking oh. about the saving real fast uh, with this game because they kind of market it as an intro to RPGs. There's no save points. You can save anywhere you want to. Yep. Yep. And you restart all boss fights. You restart any fight that you lose. So there's it's really an incredibly safe run as far as being able to get through it once you know you know what you're doing. The only way you can mess it up is if you have the option to restart a fight and you say no, because then it will take you to the load game screen and that's when you get real sad. I Actually, it's when you say yes, technically, because it asks, do you give up? Oh, <laughs> that's actually true. <laughs> Which is why I've accidentally done it wrong <laughs> once or twice, because you assume that they're asking you to continue, not do you give up? You just don't want to move the cursor when it gets to that. I don't know which one is which, but it's actually, unfortunately, it's been long enough that, since I've done that that I don't remember which text box it is. So that's good. Feels good. How close are we right now? Uh, he just got through the fight that you're going into. Wow. So really close. Yep. All right. So uh, where Ten's at right now, he's just going to run away because you have the option of either these two uh, headless horse and headless horsemen fight Thanatos thing um, or you have the uh, the one that he had before that you, that you just run away from because it takes a long time to fight Ruben doesn't really have any abilities or uh, spells or physical attacks that are really helpful in killing any of this uh, and the one thing he has is white which would get spell reflected at him so we just run away from those and we hope for the two Thanatos um, and we defend and flare or defend in white or something and Ruben just got dunked on but that's okay because Ben's throwing flares and yeah, it's fine. Also one thing to notice is um, at the end of every fight your dead characters will come back to life with one health so depending on where you are and uh, knowing whether or not like you, you may not necessarily need to res them uh, you can, or heal them you can just leave them at one health and and just go and it looks super swag like going into a fight with one health but you know, it's not actually it's, it's calculated. Yeah, because all of these Ruben is defending. Unless Ruben gets, you know, instant death, uh, Ben really is not in any danger regardless of his health level. So, you know, you, you don't technically need to heal for a lot of these. Well, basically, Ruben's whole job here is to, to tank for, for, for Ben. Just eat all the attacks, eat all the statuses, eat the... Uh... So the meat dance we have. Meat and sandwich. I always picture it like the movie Dodgeball, where uh, Ben Stiller's character like jumps out from behind and throws the dodgeball and hits somebody in the face during the tournament. <laughs> it's kind of what it feels like. Two stack this here would be better. Well, you both got three stacks, so. Yeah, you guys do like actually right on top of each other. It's crazy. <laughs> the flare is going off at the exact same time. This is amazing. Twin Red Wyvern is going to be a real zoo, too, is going to maybe decide the fate. That's what I'm, yeah. We'll let the gods decide our fate. So, way earlier when I mentioned uh, that Kaylee's dad was a founding father of Mystic Quest Land, this is. I was setting up for the joke an hour and 45 minutes later. That was that was Kaylee's father. We save him off the ship, uh, and then he lets us use his ship to go to the part of the focus tower that's supposed to be inaccessible. Uh, that's why we filled the planet with water by throwing the bomb and just plot. Um, and we're gonna take the ship and we're gonna go in the game. Well, speaking of which, I'll point out something that I, I definitely have never done in the middle of a speed run when we're on the ship. This is uh, this is also the point in the game where you make your save files, because it is Phoebe who is very well kitted out, who is defenses we use for all of the game, on our secondary character. Yeah. So if you at this point make a save file and then reset your game and start a new file, you'll have all of the resistances of this Phoebe that they have in the party right now and all of the stats of this Phoebe with all of your secondary characters at the entire run. And now I think they're headed to the ship to uh, go to the bottom part of the focus tower. Leave. Yep. 
Time to steal. It's like a it's like a boss rush, but it's like a, it's it's more of a it's a zone rush. Like they're gonna start out in the uh, the bone dungeon portion, and that's gonna lead into an ice portion, into a fire portion, into a uh, the Pazuzu's tower portion. Um, yeah. And if you mash A uh, impatiently at the end of that ship animation, you can accidentally take the ship all the way back from where you came from, and then you have to take it all the way back again. So. I've never done that. I've just people have told me that that's what happens. I've actually never done that. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> it's it's terrible. <laughs> I will say that the oh, first two bosses in this in this uh, rush oh. are incredibly difficult in the run. Yeah, yeah the first two bosses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, arguably as as hard as that mummy on the bridge. So Phoebe, Phoebe and Ben in this general area have just no definition. Like there's no turn order anymore. It's all made up and random. Sometimes Phoebe goes really fast. Sometimes Ben goes really fast. Sometimes the enemies go really fast. And here's the, uh, here's the bomb throw. See it? You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> just a little dragon skull just disappeared. Uh, let's see. So I think 10 just, was that life on the dragon? Is that right? Yeah, so you can, uh, another place where you can just cast life on the boss and it just one shots at all 10,000 health. Uh, PK does the same. And then the flare from Ben is going to be enough to kill off the other. Wait. Did he, oh, did he um, self destruct? Is that what that was? Yeah. Yeah, the ninjas can self destruct themselves into you and do a bunch of damage and die. It just takes a little bit longer because it's an extra death animation. Yeah, I don't really um, need any help self destructing. <laughs> So that was the last coin door of the of the run. And so this is the, uh, let's see, that was the bone dungeon portion. This is the ice pyramid portion. Uh, the same statues to stab in the face. It's so easy to accidentally go a wrong way and, uh, and run into a, a door that you haven't opened. Uh, definitely have more than once um, like killed this fight where 10 is at and forget to stab the switch. And so you just don't open the door and then you're sad because it, it's like a 30 second time loss. It just takes like a half second to just go boop. And if, just, you're, yeah. if, you're, if you're like me, you just sit down and are like, wait, why is, where did I miss? And then you have to go through this whole area again. Exactly. That's that's also a good point. Like you never know which door you missed or which statue you missed. You just know you missed one. You have to go try them all. And then just the other day I was doing a run to uh, with, uh, with 10 and PK in stream just to remember how this all works. And <laughs> after the very first statue, Ten was like, hey, buddy, where are you going? And I was like, probably the wrong way. <laughs> if, if you're at this part of the dungeon, because this means you've gotten floor six and a floor six on a run where you're going fast enough to potentially PB. So you are, your mind is racing towards much more difficult parts than this. So, you know, getting through the fight is what you focus on and then just not hitting the switch. I've done it all sorts of times. I've absolutely put more practice into this place than any other part of the game, and it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it just it, it goes it goes away if you don't keep up with it. Now you have me worried I'm missing a switch. They don't miss a switch. <laughs> Thanks. Uh... I got you. Unless you missed a switch, and then I don't know which one, so I don't got you. Uh, that's the one that we can skip, is the one Ten's running by, because uh, we just kind of zip around it, so it's fine. Tried to bomb the switch, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I've done it before. Oh, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah, so everyone's done that. <laughs> you So switching between weapons is L and R, and it, it gets confusing. For, for whatever reason, when you're trying to go really fast, you just... If you, go like LA, you assume that you're doing it right, and then you realize that it's LLA, or if you don't input it on the right frame, it just gets eaten. There's a lot or, of things that go wrong. Or if you do it on the same frame, like if you hit L and A on the same frame, then you'll still, um, or like it might switch the weapon, but it won't actually use it, or yeah. it will use it, but not switch the weapon. So you have to be very um, particular about how much like time you put between the button presses, and it really takes some getting used to. All right, so uh, tens on the stone golem, kind of the same, uh, the same idea as the last one. You can't life this boss, 
uh, but you can exit him, and we hope it hits, and it does. Um, and then it's just a matter of, you know, finishing off I this I didn't last. hit one! Oh my dear! Oh no! Oh no! You're you're joking, I think right? It's the one all the way to the other it side too. All the way to the other side. Oh no! I feel so, I feel bad. I, 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 yeah. yeah, that's fine. Let's come back. That's fair. That's fair to blame on the commentator, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's my fault. <laughs> it's the commentator. Cur okay, that's enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, what have I done? Uh, it's also worth to do it since a second awesome. ago you were you were talking about um, flipping weapons using your LNR. Uh, if you because a lot of times you have like a couple extra frames to switch weapons as you as you switch screens. Yep. If you switch your weapons like in the middle of a, of a, uh, I forget which frame it is, but on a, on a certain frame, if you switch your weapon while another screen is loading, you can soft lock your game. You can. It's, it's uh, certain it screen transitions too. It's as a screen. I, I think it's as a screen is transitioning out, and it's if you hit the L button. Like I've never frozen on R, and I've like tried, you know, frame frame by frame to make it happen. It's as the screen is transitioning out. There's like one frame where if you hit L at a certain point, it will it will hard lock the game. And I've but tried. Only I remember... if you're not holding another button. So like when uh, PK was talking about doing the L and R mashing to essentially start walking immediately. Uh, sorry. Um, for some reason, if you're holding the direction when you're mashing L and R, you can't soft lock, and I don't quite Ooh. understand oh. it, but. Oh, that's rude. Oh, that's wow. Rude. Yep. Right. Nice. Ooh. Well, at least it was quick. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, the Stone Golem has a very quick instant death ability. And I'm going to talk about these dogs here in a very short, very short time. I think he tried to do it again and missed, fortunately. Yep. Uh, so, that's one of the dogs out of the way. That's a confusion attack, but I think he's immune to it. Or it didn't affect him, one of the two. Didn't affect him. Uh, okay, good. good. And you just fire on the other dog and that's it so these dogs are the worst they're my least favorite enemy in the game they're fast and they like three of their four abilities are status effects and all of them um at least before like pre uh new shield route all of them affect them. um so they have to die fast and they have to die first and i specifically designed my strat for the uh the last floor around making them die first because of how just atrocious they are the um, doggos the doggos the are doggos. Doggos. Uh, let's see so 10 is on uh twin head twin head wyvern and the, uh, the wyvern is brutal it's got um it's got a lot of status effects it likes to do poison which i mean every time the poison ticks it's it's unfortunate and just takes time, and that fire attack does so much damage that just happened to uh, to Ben. That fire attack will do half of Phoebe's damage or health plus two. So if she gets hit by it twice in a row, if if Twinhead Wyvern goes second and fires her on one turn, and then immediately goes first the next turn and fires her again, she's dead. You lose the fight, and there's literally nothing you can or could have done about it. So we always hope that doesn't happen. Um. That's why he... Oh, we haven't talked about using life uh, in combat either. I haven't really needed to. So if you use life outside of combat, all it does is res you or heal you back to full. If you use it in combat, it's a mixture of a full heal, plus it um, removes any status effects. Uh, so Phoebe was low health and she was poisoned, and she uh, he used life on herself, and so it removed that status effect and healed her back to full. Hey, did you see what just happened there? I... Benjamin queued up his attack and died, and then was revived, but didn't get his attack off. Interesting. No, Interesting. I'm not sure what yeah. happened. <clears throat> I've never seen that before, coining the term. Or no, I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> That's never happened <laughs> before. I was, Welcome I was, to Mystic Quest, I guess. I was halfway there. That kind of stuff happens all the time in these runs. You'll, you'll look at something that happens, you're like, that has literally never happened before, and you'll say it every single run happens all over the place true all right so this is the zoo floor z-u-h that's the boss at the end of this it's pazuzu part two and uh yeah three dogs to start like look at that this this floor is terrible so a triple flare i think kills all three of the dogs uh 
but that's a petrify into a doom dance. Yeah, these dogs, they, they, they're, they're terrible. All doggos are great except for these. We'll pass on the Cerberus, please. Ah, let's see. That was, uh... Okay. Gonna confuse, and it confused her. Oh, no. Here's a fire. Yeah, yeah so some guy forgot to seed before this war. Okay, that's physical. We're okay. We're okay. White will kill them both, and he gets it. All right. <laughs> Cerberus or jerks? It's almost got the word burden. I don't know. Anyway, so that's just the first flight, uh, first fight on this floor. There's about ten of them, and none of them are really any nicer. So, uh, like the dogs are brutal, but then also the, um, yeah, and the dog went first there. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it's like it's like I mentioned earlier. Like they're very very fast, and they do evil status effects. Yeah, the, Phoebe won't always go before Ben here. Ben won't always go before Phoebe. None of it makes sense on this in this last dungeon. Uh, there so are no rules. So what Ten's doing is he's relying on Phoebe's ability to go first in the second turn, and he's, except for maybe this fight, might be different. Doesn't look okay. That's fine. Um, so the first, it feels uh, just in, in some of the research that we've done that the the first turn is a lot more questionable as far as like speed than the second one. The second one's more consistent, and Phoebe t tends to go first on the second turn more often than not. So if we sacrifice Ben in the first turn to allow Phoebe to go first in the second turn and kill the two that are left, that's a win. And so that's what he's trying to do is, um, well, except for here, uh, because uh, Ben can one-shot all three of these dogs with one spell, so he's going to, and fortunately it didn't take three try two tries? Three tries? Lots of tries this time. Got lucky. And then it's not really a lot better like on PK's screen where it's two dogs and a ninja. The ninjas aren't aren't much better. They're also fast and they also do a bunch of uh, status effects and such. Let's see. So uh, Ten gets the uh, the fire and the dog there. It's uh, Calm eats the, both the status effects, eats the tornado, and Phoebe does the white, which kills both of them. That's that's the whole point of that strat is for uh, for uh, for Ben to be a tank. And then PK's doing the strats that will, they're they are a little bit riskier, but they will kill in one turn, whereas uh, 10 is going always going to take two, because he's uh, specifically single targeting and then double targeting. Um, and I think, let's see, I think most of the fights, if not all the fights, PK is going to kill them in one turn. This might uh, be the exception. I mean, they just both have to be alive, but right. two, two casts of any of my two spells should kill. PK opens himself up to RNG in Mystic Quest, which is... Well, I got a YOLO since I opened myself up to not opening a door. That's true. And hey, it's like, it's working out. Like, if it... At the top end, uh, PK strats are a little bit... are quicker. Um, it's just... It never feels like it goes right. <laughs> it never does go right, but... This is, this is the floor I lost 90 seconds on my... Even still placing third place. Yep. Let's see, Ten's got the boss. The, the the boss is terrible. The floor itself is actually just as bad. Like this whole yeah, floor is just atrocious. Like this is very much this this entire floor is the last boss of the game. Please no. Oh no, that's sad. Hey, okay, that's fine. Just to go all the way back to the beginning of the fight. <laughs> All one to <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, another petrify. Please miss. Oh, um, oh. nope, it's not gonna oh. miss. So the other thing to mention about AoE attacks on your party, um, since Phoebe was petrified there, she couldn't take the her share of the damage from that AoE attack. No dog. So Ben takes all of it. Uh, so if, if you get AOE, at, if, if you take an AOE attack and you only have one person alive or able to take the damage, that person will take both shares of the AOE damage. So that's like, it's three different versions of how the exact same fight can go, <laughs> uh, all told in one story, and only one of them you get through with the, with the strat. And finding new and exciting ways to die to zoo. <laughs> oh boy. Normally it's either Petrify or it's uh, it's normally Doom Dance on Phoebe, but just getting Insta 
what physical crit something yeah on I, got, I just got straight up bodied right there yeah i was gonna say the the right, there's, there's the petrify yeah so this this fight is absolutely brutal um zoo has like four spell options and one of them is doom dance and he just loves to doom dance phoebe and kill her and you don't have res you just die like that's that's it they speed <laughs> And so we're trying to get a combination of 10 flares and 10 whites. And he's got the same, uh, Zoo has the same rotation. Oh, there it is. Unfortunate. Oh, no. That's the, uh, this is the, the Zoo infinite. Um, Zoo has the same cycle of five turns, then psych shield, and then every three turns psych shielding again. And so right now we just want to die as fast as we can. That's why he's running away is because he's not, he's, yeah. Like he just gets one shot by the AOE there, the sky attack. Um, and so he's just running, trying to get away, and I think uh, Zoo has a spell, or Zoo does have a spell that randomly does one damage like he just saw. Yep, it's some glitch from the JP version, I think. It's supposed they, to be damage. Zoo really loves to use that spell when you're just trying to die and restart the fight, and I think uh, Ten got two of those in a row after Phoebe got Doom Danced. And... Come on, don't heal, no heal! Oh. Why heal? Go. I can say about healing. God, this is brutal. Oh no, the Doom Dance. Oh, no, oh my no. god. I am well known for dying multiple multiple times. I think my record is oh. six deaths. Oh my oh. goodness. Yeah, at least you just oh, got it out. Wow. At least you just got it out of the way quick that time. This is being nice. <laughs> Time's a charm. Up, oh, there we go. I'm back in it. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Matching Doom dances. Ugh. Oh, wasn't even a spell I wanted to start with. No, don't. Come on. That's yeah, so the PK in the same boat. He's just trying to run away. Sure, so he literally. Can uh, in the can so you can start the fight over. Thank Doom you. Dance. Right, there it is. At least, oh my God! <laughs> oh, oh. Yes. There's no RNG in this game at all. That's what we said earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. So Doom Dance can miss; it just doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is all. This is all manipulation for the final boss. That's that's what it. You know. I mean, yeah. You'll see, everyone watching. You'll see the final boss is 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 even more crazy than this one. This one's just a practice. Yeah. Let's go for it. Oh my god, he crit her! Oh, did oh. you see that? Oh. <laughs> was that crit. a physical crit? That was a physical crit oh. for full health. More than wow. full health. Birds are jerks. You're so mean, man. This is terrible. Yeah. Like, this is absolutely the last boss of the game. There's, there's no question. <laughs> this is the final boss. And then we go to the glorified cutscene, very much Final Fantasy VII-esque, of the Dark King, who, to be fair, is um, very challenging in, um, oh, boy. like, in a casual run. He's a ton of health. He's just difficult. Does a ton of damage. All the status effects. He's really rude. But mm -hmm. um, we have the math. We're going to cure him to death. Uh, basically, I believe the way it, I don't know exactly how it works, but it just works. What happens is you cure him, and then the amount that you cure him is more than either the amount of health that he has or the like highest number that the game can register. So then it t ticks over into actually doing damage instead. Um, so when you cure him, you cure him for so much that the game thinks that you're damaging him, and it shows up as damage, and it's a ton of damage. So we do a specific movement here. Um, a specific uh, order of spells in order to just cure him to death. And, and for the record, uh, get ready on time for 10. Yes, yep. yes. So yep. there's the first cure and hit 23,000. So in this and fight in particular, it's very important to make sure you do not have the weapon out that speeds you up 
or it gives you more magic because this is so mathematically like nailed down that if we do that, then we basically can't beat him. If you have the claw, if you have the claw or the sword, you will actually heal him instead of doing damage. Oh to him. boy! Oh no! It's it's actually not terrible if you miss with the cure. It just has to be in the correct order. Like it's got to be one cure from from Ben, then a cure from Phoebe, and then two cures from Ben. And as long as you do that, you're okay. Uh, even with that cure, all that does, I think, is just add more time to the timer. It just it sure another, <clears throat> another text box that right, says... And time. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Spike. Wait. You thought. Spike. I... I wait. You're, you're... Am I too high a level? Maybe. Ah, this is... Uh, I, I don't know. I did... I have never dealt with this before. I have. I hope this kills. Yeah, I've dealt with this too, but I can't remember what I'm supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, I, right. I don't. I honestly have no clue. Uh, I think the final phase, you just flare white and just try to wipe them. At least that's what I believe the last said the last time we were discussing this. So you're saying so instead of double clear? Let's see. So I'm gonna try. Um, I'm gonna keep up with the numbers here. So we've done twenty. Oh. Was that that might have been a paralyzed, which didn't go through thanks to the shield. That's really fortunate. Secure for 13. And so we want Ben to get his cure here. Okay. 23. So you have about 6,000 left to go. But I think here, here you he did have floor two. Yeah. So he, he, didn't, he didn't cure. So you should just be able to do, I think it's 24 is the break point. For that, but he's uh, saying flare life. Or flare white. We're gonna give this a shot. See what happens. I think that was only if you get the. Yeah, I don't know if it, how it impacts your miss or two. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. We're yeah. We're doing a lot. <laughs> Figuring out strats on. This is why you just reset if you don't get floor six. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. The strats that we have uh, set up are for level 21, 22. I think 23 works as well. Um, yep. Yeah. Theoretically. Oh no. It it should work for twenty three as well. Hey, um, time. <laughs> apparently. Wait, is that? Yeah, that's yeah, good. We're yeah, good. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Hey, yeah, I, I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. Wow. Oh no. Wow. Arg. Oh. I'll have to watch that back and figure out what happened. Why are we arguing? Yeah, I thought maybe just. Uh, Phoebe didn't cure him. Or did Phoebe miss? Yeah. And you I, start, I, start the cycle over, like, turn one, I think. I'm pretty sure. She just healed him for all the damage. It should work. Strategizing on stream. Yeah, that's that's we'll figured out. Welcome to Mystic Quest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't cure yourself. Yep. <clears throat> this might be, uh... This might be another another attempt. He healed himself. Let's see, ten slowly working towards the best song in the game, which he's gonna stop at, right? Oh yeah, obviously. Let's see. Uh. Maybe. Oh come oh. on! Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, that's that's gonna. Yep. Okay, let's try that one more time. Ow. That's Ow. pretty standard and always is, feels bad because now she's, if she dies here, which she will. <laughs> Damn. That's rough. Oh, man. Is this just another reset on this? Oh, my I God. think so, yeah. It's gotta be. Yeah. That, that is actually like the only way. That... I had him heal himself, which tanks. It just slows it down. All right. Either if Phoebe dying, no, Phoebe dying is the only way that that really for what it's worth, ruined, uh, for what it's worth, I tell everyone when it, when you have a Mystic Quest race, <laughs> the RNG is basically up until the last hit. I didn't yeah. expect that to be literal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh. that was as accurate as it gets. Well, I have my third place now. I'm never playing this game again. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go play Tetris. <laughs> right, so now I think it's 
one more cure and defend, and that should. No, don't cure yourself. Oh, oh no. No, this is fine. This just slows it down. He does this every time. It was the it was the the, the, the previous cure that really needed to hit. This is the most troll, actually. I think this is troll. time yeah. right here. This is time. Time. There it is. I am good game. Wow, good GG. Yeah. GG. Oh, turned yeah. into something there at the end. You yeah, both found yeah, every bit of bad luck possible in this entire run along the way. You yeah. shut off everything in this game that could possibly go wrong. That is accurate. Fine, oh, your wipes were there, right? Oh man! All right. Well, this is awesome. Okay. After all, after all that is said and done, let's see people in chat. Because I saw a lot of people in chat. They were like, "I love Mystic Quest." You know, like I remember this game, or I love, love the music and stuff like that. You know, if if for some reason they, they they watch this and they're like, you know, this could be a game that I really want to speed run. Where could they go? Well, there's a I learned the run first off. Oh, ten is a video that is actually how I initially learned the speed run. So if you want ten to explain, oh yeah, you can uh, either go to my channel and do exclamation point MQ tutorial or just search it up on YouTube, um, Mystic Quest speed run tutorial. Uh, run through this Venus Shield route that we did here. Uh, and if you want to learn the other route, El Nagus has a really, 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 really in-depth guide on Game Facts, actually. And that's how I initially, like I said, I never played this game before speedrunning. So what I did was I had El Nagus's guide up on one monitor and the game on the other. And that's yep. that's just how I learned it at the, at the beginning. And if you have any questions, there is a Mystic Quest Discord as well, which you're welcome to join. Um, I don't know how... I'm don't know how to find the channel but you'll probably you search for Final Fantasy Quest, or just there. message one of us we'll, we'll 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 get you in the right direction yeah and, and i'm sure anybody in the community would be more than happy to answer questions or lead you the right way yeah, yeah. And, if, you it, if you hop on my stream it's pk4787 <laughs> um, i can throw a link in there i'm sure 10 would as well um mm -hmm. all right and, and like you said there's you know your pk4787 if Ken and uh, Calm, if anyone was interested in reaching out to you or checking out your Twitch channel, uh, where could they do so? Which just TV 10. Slash <laughs> just 10, PK4787, and Calm Lamity. Yeah. Some of us stream uh, the game. Some of us, try, like myself, try very hard not to stream the game, but I love talking <laughs> about the game, and I will absolutely yeah. answer any questions that you have mm -hmm. regarding it, even if I just don't ever want to play it. <laughs> Last time. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh any any other anything else you would like to say any other type of shout outs or anything like that yes i want to say thank you very much to midnight vesper and uh, everybody else who put this on calm thank you for uh commentating also vesper appreciate you Absolutely. guys a lot and all your knowledge of the game and pk thank you very much for for racing of course thank you ten yeah and thank you uh midnight vesper for putting all this together it's been a lot of fun sort of yeah <laughs> thank you thank you all for running that you know th that run uh it was it was incredibly entertaining and that's one of the reasons oh, why i love i love mystic quest runs honestly for that reason i'm glad you felt that way Holy yeah cow. it's incredibly entertaining <laughs> anyways uh it, information on all of our hotfix shows are going to be available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix uh from there you can find out more information about submitting your runs uh, to any of our weekly shows. We have so many. We got one more coming up here in a little bit. And tomorrow, by the way, we have the first step with Keys and... Or I'm sorry. Yeah. Keys and J-Hobs. I was about to say Keys and Fees. Hmm. I wonder why. They're going to be doing <laughs> Torchlight 3 starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. But don't forget, we're not done for tonight. While well, the bargain bin may be closing its doors... We're going to open up the spoopy doors for speed runs from the crypt. I tried that transition. I don't think it worked. <laughs> I, it's not scripted up, but anyways, <laughs> we're going to take a small break. We'll go ahead and switch the shows. This is a great time to go ahead and get some water, hydrate, stretch, uh, do anything that you can in between that break to get things right for spoopy season and speed runs from the crypt. Thank you all so much. We'll see you guys later. Take care.